at the international level, but you know he's played a lot of cricket, both before he came to Ireland and with the Warriors in recent years. So he's someone who knows his game very well. He's causing Zazai some trouble here. Well, that's just nipping around a little bit, and Zazai, who hasn't played much cricket recently, it is obviously fair to say he's come off the back of a little injury concern as well. So this is a man that's perhaps short of of batting out in the middle. Well, it's not often in T20 cricket, is and is it, Andrew? You see batters beaten on both both sides of the bat. Previous delivery, that one looked like it left him and beat the outside edge, and that one's cut him in half and beat the inside edge. It's top quality stuff with the the new wish ball. And a fantastic over from Graham Hume. A great way to start off his T20 international career. Just the one single from a 15 without loss after three. Yeah, just to return to that Zazai discussion we were having, and that one innings, the 162 against Ireland, our resident Stato, Jer Siggins, has been busy on Twitter. He's let us know that 20% of Zazai's T20 international runs came in that one innings, and he's played 25 games. Scoring 162 in a T20 game. It's obscene, really, isn't it? It's tre tremendous. <laughs> Little goes short to Garbaz, who's quick onto that pull shot. Doesn't get all of it, though. Curtis Camfer very easily going to be able to come round and retrieve that. It's just going to be two. I think Little has just ever so slightly rushed Gurbaz. Well, he still hit it in front of square, which is perhaps a sign that, he, like you said, he probably picked up the length quite quickly. Interesting that just after that delivery, Paul Sterling will come out of slip and go out to mid-wicket. But also, we were talking about the dimensions of the ground. That leg side is now much shorter than it was yesterday, and I think I probably would have raced away to the boundary on the shorter side. Pulled. Oh, oh. tremendous effort from Fionn Hand at mid arm. Would have been a spectacular catch if he'd taken it, but Josh Little has been crunched to mid arm by Gerbaz. It will have to go down as a half chance. But it's just gone past Fionn Hand, who was in a few steps at mid arm. He was right on that ring. It may have been a bit more conventional a shot. Oh, but well, he's nearly announced himself to international cricket in a stunning style. A fantastic effort to get to that, I think. And I don't think Josh Little would have been telling him to sit on the ring at this stage of the game. Well, that last delivery from Josh Little had a little bit of zip behind it. He's very much a rhythm bowler, isn't he? Little, well, all bowlers are, but it's easy to detect with Little whether he's in that rhythm or not. He definitely was yesterday evening. I think on that delivery, he just looked just a little bit more smooth in his action getting to the crease, and that's always a good sign for him. Garbaz wants two here, but he's not going to get it. Just tucking that one away off the hip. Yeah, you can tell really with the with the pace more so the little bowls at that he's bowling well rhythmically and in good form in recent weeks, which is always good for Irish cricket. Circumspect start from Sazai, like 2 off 10. We mentioned his career strike rate is up towards 150, so oh, he's mistimed that pull shot there into the leg side. This is unlike him. Well, I don't think it's really been by design, to be honest. I think he's just struggling a little bit out there. As you said in the previous over of Graham Hume, he was just beaten on both sides of the bat. He was just a little bit indecisive coming forward and the runs that he has scored have been relatively mistimed at the moment so perhaps just struggling himself to to get used to conditions quickly that is an absolute brute from josh little to finish off the fourth over a very good one despite eight runs coming off a little bit unlucky that that was the case four overs gone afghanistan 23 without loss 
Yes, it has been that, like we said, a bit of a circumspect start, but bar that one opportunity to few in hand, which would have been, let's be honest, it would have been an absolute, st absolutely stunning catch. It's been relatively chanceless, these four overs for Afghanistan. And that was what I was there on doing yesterday, was the fact that they did lose uh, that magic number of three wickets in the power play. Mark Adair is going to come back into the attack, just the one over for Hume on debut so far. Adair goes short to Zazai and perhaps a hint fortunate to get away with that one. Just a hint. I mean, one of the over called. It looked, it looked quite leg side to me. Yeah, something's got to give with Zazai here. Normally quite an aggressive player. Three off 12. Well, he's plundered that one straight, but again, just not getting really anything on it. And Graham Hume has done well to stop it. He can't prevent them getting back for two. But as I, you can see there, that was the first delivery, really. That he's had a sniff of being somewhat in the slot, and he really, really went after that. Well, it's probably not the worst result in the world for Ireland there, that there was that hint of a fumble from Graham Hume that allowed Zaza to get back on strike. Because after playing such a false stroke, he was fortunate he hit it as straight as he did, otherwise it would have been straight down Midon's throat. And get him back on strike, keep the pressure on, and they put Midon back as soon as he played that aggressive stroke. Swing and a miss now from Zaza. You can sense he's trying to tick here now. He's 5 or 14 in the power play. Afghanistan, again, just not getting off to the start they would have hoped for. You know, I know, look, it's better to be Zero down than what we saw yesterday where, they, where they'd they lost two wickets at this stage and lost three wickets by the end of the power play, but it's still not the amount of runs they'd have been craving at this early stage. Sasai cuts away, but straight to Paul Sterling. It's a pretty occupied offside field in the ring. Yeah, it's good from a depth. He knows Zazai's ticking. Just took the pace off there to see if he'd go after it. I think Zazai read it out of the hand pretty nicely. Seems like every Afghan batter on this tour so far has they pretty struggled to get going early on in their innings. The one or two players that have gotten scores have have caught up, obviously. But interesting as a team, they're struggling in conditions. Well, not there. And that's a wide half volley that is thrashed away through extra cover and just relieves a bit of the pressure that Mark Adair was building. Yeah, it's just it was a slower delivery from Mark Adair, but he's misplaced this one really. And even though Zazai hasn't found things easy so far, he's never going to miss out on that one. Smashes it away to the fence for his first boundary. Cutting away, but straight to the man. Fionn hand as well to prevent a single there. So it's been still a pretty good first five overs from Ireland, but Afghanistan are wicketless. 29 without loss after five overs. Myself and Nathan are going to just step out of the commentary box for the next five and leave you in the capable hands of Alan Lewis and Hamid Shaysha. So 29 without loss after five. A subdued beginning, Hamid. So far, I would say, sir, um, looking at Hazratullah Zazai, he seems to be trying to find his feet. Um, the good thing is he's not uh, getting frustrated. Usually he does that. that, that that's one uh, weakness that I've uh, seen him playing over, over the years. He can get frustrated very quickly. But uh, as I said, he hasn't been playing uh, much, wasn't part of the squad in the previous two games. So, yeah. Uh, I won't worry too much about him, uh, him missing a few balls, but... Graham Hume resuming from the city end. He pulled a really good over from the Dundonald end, only went for one. And it's one of his appeals, if you haven't been close to him, Hamid. He's Tim Murta-esque. Bowls a yeah. very good line, the length bowls pretty straight, yeah. not a great pace. Yeah. Absolutely, something I've noticed uh, over the couple of last games as well with the uh, uh, Irish bowling. They have uh, stuck to their line and length. That has been a strength. 
and they have, they have done a good job. Well, and he's found his feet there, yep. Zezai. That was yep. wide. And he latched onto it very well, finding the gap. And that sped away for four. And probably a measure of that little bit of patience you were talking about, Hamid. Yeah. No, I think uh, he needs a few more deliveries in that area, I think. Um, and soon he will be off. Could be interesting. And again, Kapaz needs to realize yeah, yeah, who his yeah, batting yeah. partner is, Hamid. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, he's not very keen on, on running. And interestingly, uh, some fans in Afghanistan call him the Afghan Inzamamul Haq, another yeah. international star who wouldn't want to run. I remember Arjuna Rana Tunga was another one. Gosh, we could have a quiz on this. Quick single, well run. Yeah, Balberni was kind of hanging on the edge of the circle. The value there was playing it late. So I just let that come on and softer hands and an easy single, and that's good from him. Yeah. Rahmanullah seems comfortable today. Um, I was speaking to the manager who told me he has been suffering from a bad toothache for the past few days. It can be a haunting, haunting experience if you have... Don't tell me about toothaches, Hamid. One of the most distressing things you can have. Given as a wide. If you think about this one, 20% of Zazai's entire career runs happened in one innings in the UAE. Against Ireland, should I say, in yep. Cerro in 2019. Yep, I was there. Ireland Good running be, again, yep. Yeah, Ireland will be disappointed with that. That really probably should have been cut off by George Dockerell, but the tendency, of course, is in the power play. Yeah. The tendency is for those inner circle feelers to yeah. hang on the edge of the ring. Yeah. I just have a feeling that Afghans have come out with a plan today. Uh, the partnerships or the lack of them uh, was an issue in the last couple of games. They have managed to, to, to stick together so far. They need that. Well, we spoke pretty much about that. The biggest thing is zero wickets column. And that's it again. Yep, he's warming up. You don't want to see that as an island fan. And it brings us to the end of the sixth. Afghanistan, 41 without loss. And that was more slapped through extra cover, Absolutely. Hamid. Absolutely. As I said, he needed a few deliveries in that sort of area. They should avoid that. Uh, they, they, the last thing they want is for him to wake up, uh, to say so. And uh, he can take the game away from Ireland if he stays there for another four or five overs. There we are, there's the opening partnership, 41 evenly spread. Karpaz, 15 from 15, and Zazai accelerating in the last two Yep, overs. not bad at all, looking at how they were doing in the previous games. So a change from the Dundonald end. Gareth Delaney coming into the attack. He's really prospered and blossomed over the last short period of time and really given his captain some options, Hamid. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Zazai and Gurbaz both come from southeastern Afghanistan, from the provinces of Bakhtia and Khos, two of the provinces who have given some stars, superstars, I would say, to the Afghan uh, national uh, cricket team. Uh, those provinces, uh, they're, they're cricket crazy, lots of lots of players over the past 10 years coming from that part of Afghanistan. Um, huge fan followers in the, those parts of Afghanistan.
this power play. It's the first time in 12 T20s that Ireland haven't taken a wicket in the power play, which is a measure, Hamid, of what you've probably yep. talked about, Afghanistan's plan. And very clever, too. I haven't seen them playing too many risky shots so far today. Uh, something they did quite a lot in the previous two games. Uh, some of the players, uh, I saw Hashmatullah Shahidi going for the reverse sweep five or six times in the previous game, and he eventually uh, he was uh, uh, dismissed with a trying a reverse sweep. Yeah, it can be a very profitable shot for those that are good at it. Yeah. And again, can get you into all sorts of trouble also, chewing up dot balls and then eventually getting out. And Delaney starting well again. Only one from his three deliveries so far. Good single. They're taking their time, considering the fact that both of them have not been feeling well over the past few days. Gurba, Gurba's with a toothache, and uh, Hazratullah, we, we heard that he was having some uh, fever and temperatures. Oh, well that, that's an excellent shot. Yep. If you can sweep it well, you don't need to reverse sweep it. Well played. Well, I think the thing there is he got himself into a great position to sweep. He got low, was able to get it aerial. Have a look at this. And you can see that head going towards the ball and really just ease it, eased it over 45 for four. Excellent batting. A good start all the same from Delaney. Only six from the over. 47 without loss at the end of the seventh. And again, we were talking off Air Hamid and also pre-match, you know, the value of wickets in hand because in the main, most of the major clumbing and watch South Africa do much the same. They plundered Ireland in the last yep. four overs of the innings. So. Afghanistan, they bat deep. Uh, and uh, all the way until 9 and 10 with Rashid Khan coming out and trying his helicopter um, shots. Uh, so they won't be worried about uh, the runs on the board uh, that much. It's important that they have managed to keep their wickets. And I think symbolically, if they manage to put up a partnership of 50 or more, that will be significant. So a big moment for the new cap, number 71, Fionn Hand on debut. His mother, of course, Brenda, works for Cricket Ireland, and she was out there at the capping ceremony. A very proud moment for Phil and the family. Always Thank a great moment when you make your debut. Beautiful gesture, absolutely. was kind of a, a wonderment around the press and otherwise would Ireland stick with the same team and try and press for a series victory but no they wanted to try and develop that little bit of depth quick run and that's another thing I've been impressed so far they have been running well again Huge number of titanic struggles between these two teams dating back to the early 2000s, both associate nations. And Ireland really had the upper hand in the early stages. And Afghanistan took over with aplomb. Yeah. One question, I mean, is there, is there ever a question mark, Rashid Khan, the way his batting has developed to come up higher in the order in T20 cricket? I was speaking to him the other day and I asked him if he now considered himself a complete all-rounder. He said he always did. It's just that they never gave him a chance as a, as a batsman. Um, but yeah, um, I think uh, um, 
league cricket, uh, franchise cricket, has really, really helped him uh, polish his batting. And there is this entertainment factor involved in franchise cricket. You need to entertain the crowds as well. And that's why I think uh, the Hyderabad Sunrisers wanted him to bat a bit up the order. And uh, he does have that entertainment factor. He certainly is box office. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Always a joy to watch. Plays the game with a smile on his face the whole time. It was just something that I kind of felt within this Afghan setup. I think he might need to take the Captain Nabi out for a few dinners and maybe convince him <laughs> that he can get up the order. No, absolutely. Um, he can. Uh, he's an entertainer and uh, he's the kind of player who could uh, put the pressure on the opposition coming out uh, a bit higher and playing 10 15 balls he can he can really entertain and well struck but straight to the fielder Again. and i think that brings up the 50 partnership for the opening wicket and that's that's significant that's something afghanistan hasn't been able to do in the previous two games no doubt about that and of course, another thorn in Ireland's time playing against Afghanistan. Najbullah Zadran, yeah. vastly experienced, and again a great finisher too. <laughs> Fionan getting terribly excited. Yep. He's demolished yep. everything yep. there, yep. Hamid. Yep. Yeah. Looks safe to me, but no, he looked very safe yeah, to me too. But it fine. brings us to the end of the eighth. Afghanistan 52 without loss. So, what are your thoughts from here, Hamid, in terms of I, the next passage of play for Afghanistan? I think this is the kind of base that they needed for the innings, and Afghanistan have managed to give themselves that opportunity in this game. They just need to stick together. I think there is no need to kind of go for the adventurous crazy shots yet I think they still need to stick together for another four to five overs and then probably in the last seven and eight overs that's where they can think about uh, putting a bigger total on the board they still need to stick together I think uh, and so far they have done well they needed this they desperately needed this and looking forward to obviously Two teams in transition, Hamid. Who are, the, who are the players from Afghanistan that we should be looking to in the future? Obviously, we're just used to them for the first time, really. Absolutely. Um, Afghanistan, especially in the bowling department, they have been known globally for their spin attack with the likes of Rashid Khan, uh, Mujib Sadran, and the captain, Mohammad Nabi himself. Another 17, 18-year-old, uh, uh, Noor Ahmed, who has been playing in England, uh, is another name. Of course, he's playing in the 100 at the moment. Yep, Nor yep. Ahmed, but Probably that's the reason why he wasn't part of the squad. But interestingly, a couple of new names emerging are, are not spinners. They are fast bowlers. Fazal Haq Farooqi, he seems to be mentioned quite a lot. He was with, he was, um, uh, although he didn't get to play a lot in the Indian Premier League, but he was part of it. And Azmat Umaza is another one. Well that's played and that's... Oh. Just one bounce to the fielder. It's quite interesting there. Harry Tector is, of course, probably Ireland's premier fielder. And there was an incident yesterday with Andy McBride down at this end of the ground. If we look at that backdrop of the trees there, because yep. he seemed a little bit slower to react. And uh, again, quite rightly, holding his guns. Often you see fielders come in too quickly and balls go over their head, but just didn't seem to pick that up or maybe just in some way delayed in terms of judging the velocity which says I hits the ball comfort again and speaking of fielding I don't think Afghanistan uh, covered themselves uh, they didn't do a good job yesterday I mean um, I think they easily gave away 15 20 runs because of their misfielding especially down there on the boundary uh, with I think it was Ibrahim Zadran um, they didn't look sharp in the field at all 
Oh, that's a very good shot. It's full very from good shot. Yep. Camfer, but Gerbaz has yep, laid yep, into yep, that. Yep. That's a gorgeous shot, Hamid. It's a very good shot, absolutely. Gerbaz looks fine. He looks comfortable today. Probably, I don't know. It, it, sometimes it depends on who you're playing with. Uh, probably Hazrat seems to have an effect on Gerbaz as well. Uh, he, he looks confident. Oh, and that's a bit of fortune. Yep. But with third man up in the circle, it's always on. Interestingly, that was yep. the cause of his dismissal yesterday. Yes, I mean, it went absolutely. straight to that fielder. Absolutely. No, I think Ireland need the wicket now. I think if these two manage to stay together for the next four or five hours, I think um, they will make it difficult for Ireland. On the other hand, the Afghans are doing a wonderful job, I think. Very much so. They've been watchful, authoritative, good cricket shots. Could be four more. And indeed yep. it is. Turning out to be a very expensive over for Ireland. But probably this is what Afghanistan needed for that transition from the first stage of being cautious and careful and keeping their wickets and now probably they're thinking about putting some more runs on the on the boat well it's again interesting Curtis Camfer he's a lively medium fast bowler but can sometimes in our opinion just mix things up a little bit too much as opposed to concentrating on that line and length just there well bolt and there's nothing wrong with that oh oh he's called the white this is another area of distress for us as a commentary team. I was talking to Paul Reynolds yep. <laughs> before the game. He tried to claim otherwise, but obviously in our league cricket, he would umpire a lot and he'd say, that is a wide ball, and then take five seconds yeah. to tell everyone in the audience it was a <laughs> wide ball. However, we have one more. And that completes the ninth over at last. Amid 66 without loss, Afghanistan. Now that's a very good score, I would say, given the fact that they haven't lost any wickets. Well, of course, Mohammed Nabi and that game one score, he just felt that Afghanistan needed another 15 or 20 runs. True. It was a uh, nervous. I wouldn't be surprised if Nabi sends out Najib at three or even even Rashid Khan. You never know. I think they have given themselves that base. They have wickets in hand. Why not? Why not take a gamble and experiment and send somebody who can completely change the momentum? I mean, they have the upper hand right now, but the crowd wouldn't mind Rashid Khan out there. <laughs> Well, there was one aspect we were talking about yesterday. It's been lovely, Hamid, for us to watch how the team have engaged with a vast amount of travelling support from all areas of the world here to support their team. And after the match, no sitting in the tent, feeling sorry for themselves, out to meet the public. And that's nice to see. That, that, that's true. I met somebody who has travelled uh, all the way down from Australia to watch Afghanistan. That's impressive. Again, Camfer resorted to a slower ball bumper in the previous over, and Han does the yep, same. And yep, I they... think Gorbas has decided to go for it, looks like. Well, that's what we would call in Ireland just a genuine long hop, a buffet delivery, we would call yeah. that. And as you say, the run rate's ever increasing here, Hamid. It is. Now, he's not helping himself. Now, I can see pressure creeping in um, with the Irish bowlers. I think the last over was uh, a good one for Afghanistan. Yeah, they just increased the tempo. Kabaz now, 20, 39 from 27. That's going to be four more. Another four. 
Yep, the plan is clear now from now on, I think. Well, any width, of course, at all is going to be punished. And again, that was wide and played beautifully late by Gerbaz and just dissecting those two fielders behind square on the offside. And again, Hamid, one of the qualities is everything so far from Afghanistan has been quality cricket shots. No. Yep, absolutely. I mean, you don't often see Hazratullah out there on, in, on the pitch in the 10th over and his strike rate is under 100. That, that's, that's surprising, but he, he's out there with the plan. That's a huge shot. And I think it's out of the ground. Wonderfully played by Gurbas. That takes him to 49. Well, that is, Hamid, a very large six. And of course, it's with the wind down there as well. And this, an expensive over. It is. So far for Ireland. 16 from it so far with a ball to go. That's a big shot now. That was massive. They haven't hit enough of those uh, in the previous games. I think in the last game, they didn't hit any sixes at all. Well, I certainly saw him pre-match, Gerbaz. He was lampooning them over there with great yep. regularity in practice. So he's put his practice to work in the middle. And they're in a, getting themselves into an incredibly strong position here as we approach the 10th over. And no surprise, obviously, a ball to go that yeah. the teams are going to take drinks. So... Of course, these conditions, Hamid, you'd be well used to in Afghanistan, clear blue skies. Absolutely. I mean, um, 35 is good weather in Kabul these days, uh, but it could go up to 38 uh, and even uh, even 39 in the capital in Kabul, whilst in some provinces, 45 in, in June, July, August is normal. Um, in the province where Gurbas comes from, Khust, it's, it's one of the hottest provinces. Um, and it can easily reach up to 45, 46 degrees. And he, as a child, has played most of his cricket in those sorts of temperatures. And same with Hazratullah Zazai. So I don't think the temperature would be much of an issue for them. They're used to it. But I've been speaking to some uh, Irish fans, and they said this is not normal for them. This is, this is too hot in this, this time of the year. Well, it's certainly very hot. It's welcome. For any cricket lover, weather like this. Absolutely. And tell me, Hamid, within domestic cricket in Afghanistan, obviously there's been lots of change. Uh, how has that developed over the course of the last, more particularly in the latter, the last, last four or five years? It, it's still work in progress. They do not have the kind of domestic structures that other international uh, ICC full-time members have. It's a long, long journey for Afghanistan. But the Shpagiza Domestic Cricket League has been a massive, massive uh, uh, help. I think uh, that's the sort of tournament that gives platform to players like uh, Nur Ahmad I mentioned earlier. He was 16 when uh, Rais Ahmadzai, uh, the deputy coach of the Afghan side, brought him from his uh, home province, from Khost, to the capital, Kabul. And the, he, he, he actually argued with some of the teams on his behalf. He said, this boy has something. You just need to give him a platform and he is playing in the 100 right now. Well, of course, that's something, again, the country of Ireland size is when you see talent, I was always an advocate, I obviously play, but also selected. And when you see a talent, you've just got to push forward because a lot of the domestic youth structure here is very, very good. And the tendency is now, obviously, it's aided by the provincial setup that we have now following you know, test status and all that sort of stuff. So there is that platform to move on. And, you know, you're looking at a good few of them there, the likes of Tucker, Tector, Delaney, Adair, Little. You know, that's been part of the, what I would call excellent transition. And again, the gambles that were taken at the right time to do that sort of thing, because teams do find that happens to them. And Ireland did, obviously, the dream team of, 2011, the latter stages of 15, and then 
you get that slump. And that and uh, an extra run to end an already expensive over. It certainly was, and Afghanistan have moved on to 83 without loss at the end of 10, and an excellent half century from Gurpas from 31 delivery. Started slowly, but just got into his work, and he's been he needed that excellent today. And if you're right, just took that little bit of extra time and then really showed us the way. So Mohammed Nabi will be absolutely delighted with the work of the two openers. He will be, absolutely. And it's time for me to say farewell to Hamid and welcome back Andrew Blair White into the commentary box. Well, since you've departed, Andrew, things have moved on a shade. Yes, definitely. Departed at 29 without loss after five. It had been a very circumspect start, but I don't want to harp on about stuff that we've said plenty of the time, but when you've got partnership beginning to brew, when you don't lose wickets in that power play, when you've got a bit of a base to go on, seen in the last couple of overs that Gerbaz has just managed to really find his feet and you felt it was a, about time and it was going to be some Afghanistan batter that, that had to click today and Gurbaz looks to be that man. Certainly is. After two failures, a little bit unlucky in the second game to find the solitary fielder at short third man, but that's what he did, but he's certainly cashed in today and taken his time and just motored really for that period that you were off commentary Andrew and he's played beautifully he has bringing up his fourth 50 in T20 international cricket in the process and there'll still be plenty more to come one would have to imagine Zazai hasn't been probably the the hazard to Zazai that, that Ireland are certainly used to but he's done a, a job in keeping company with Gurbaz and, and starting off this partnership in a good way. Well, that was a very good piece of bowling by Gareth Delaney. He held that last delivery back. That one a little bit quicker. Nearly down to save the one. But it's a great sight for Captain Andrew Balberni. This elevation of Gareth Delaney. A little bit of security in the middle overs. He's done very well, Andrew. Yeah, he's done terrifically. He's bowled very nicely in the last month, six weeks. And he's going to prevent another boundary from this over. So just the six singles from it, you take that at any stage. But especially given the pressure that Ireland have been under in the last couple of overs, 11 gone, Afghanistan, 89 without loss. Well, we spoke, didn't we, Andrew, in game one? There was that period when... Delaney and Dockrell came on. I'm somewhat surprised that we haven't seen George Dockrell. I know I've been on the George Dockrell bandwagon, but since his two overs, two for seven, didn't get a bowl yesterday. And we're moving into the 12th over. This is kind of a spell when, speaking with Gary Wilson last night, they like Josh Little to bowl in around over 11, over 12. Just surprised not to see George Dockrell in at some stage into this attack. but Well, I like the option of bringing Little on. I, I think it does serve a purpose, and, and it's a genuine wicket-taking option at this time of the innings. But at the same stage, you know, when you're going at over eights as a team, Cartellini's two overs have gone for 12 and looked difficult. I must say, I'm a little bit shocked myself, really. I just don't want to get into this habit of making George Dockwell an underused bowler. Well, of course, the other side of it, Andrew, is the resources that Andrew Balberni has at his disposal, and sometimes it can be a weakness, and of course, we haven't even mentioned 
That could be a chance. A dare, and indeed he's taken it. Excellent. It was a question, really. He looked at Lorcan Tucker initially and then said, I love all of that, said Mark Adair, and took a very comfortable catch moving backwards. And that a valuable wicket for Ireland and justifying the return of Josh Little. Yeah, well, that's exactly what I said at the start of this over. He's a real wicket-taking option, and he's just rushed Gurbaz, as he has done so throughout this series, just a little bit quicker onto him than Gurbaz perhaps was expecting. He's going to depart for what's been a very well-made 52, but just got none of that. And Mark Adair, not easy, those types of catches, but he's taken it very comfortably and very well. And Gurbaz goes, sorry, for 53, should I say. It's 52 currently on the scoreboard at the ground, but departs for 53 from 35 balls. Very good knock. Super knock, that has to be said. Done a great job for his team, Gurbaz. Can't ask for more than that in T20 cricket. But you're right, Andrew. The one factor that Little has in his armory is he hurries players. And that took the slice of the bat it's in around that niggling area, that rib area. And you can get the angle of that sort of delivery right. They can be the rewards and the rewards he got. Brings Ibrahim Zadram to the crease, who looked good yesterday with bat in hand. Even though he departed sharper than he'd have wanted to. He looked really the only Afghanistan batter to look properly at ease at the crease for his 17. I think a day, though, however, he'll want to forget in the field. I think it was one of the worst fielding displays at international level I think I have ever seen. Now that might be a big statement, but the ground fielding was nothing short of atrocious. Yeah, it wasn't a, a day Afghanistan as a team would have been proud of, I suspect. So I just had a funny feeling the way Ireland approached that run chase yesterday. Actually, there was a real game to be had for Afghanistan. And I think just something that, that was at the back of my mind last night, thinking back on the game, has little slightly rushes Zad ran there, but he's got a decent enough piece of it out towards the mid-wicket boundary. Going to get two to get off the mark. Well, I would say... I was just, uh, sorry, just to complete my point there, I was not overly impressed with the way they approached the run chase subdued you would have said just didn't I thought the game there could have been a more forceful approach and they lost a couple of games last summer against Zimbabwe playing in a relatively similar mindset and I say it just because actually since Heinrich Milan's come in it's completely against how they've been playing in terms of their batting has been full of aggression full of attacking options I just felt they went slightly into their bunker chasing a small score yesterday yeah it's a very fair point and to the other one i was going to say about afghanistan's fielding of course one of ireland's favorites john mooney used to be the fielding coach for afghanistan and if he was watching yesterday and he was in the afghan change rooms i'd say teacups could have flown against the walls Old John Boy has a short fuse, as we know, but does everything with great heart and was one of Ireland's great fielders, and he brings a great amount of enthusiasm. I certainly know Harry Tector lent on his ears, felt his fielding wasn't at the level it should have been, picked up the phone, one man to ring, John Mooney, who was only too thrilled to help, and uh, loves his cricket, John wonderful representative for Ireland played with his heart in his sleeve and with a full heart I was there the day he hit the winning runs in Bangalore 2011 one hell of a party that was Andrew Blair White are you going to tell me about the Brett Lee getting his guitar out story no, that, again? Oh, no, no, that was, that was the last night against India. 
There was a plane to be got at 7 a.m. No point in going to bed, as you well know, Andrew. Just keep playing there, Brett. Keep strumming. A lot of Oasis that night. 96 for one from 12. A lot of today is going to be the day. Were you I'd say you were joining in. You betcha. Oh. Some of the Clontarf contingent also, Billy Coughlin. We all had our turbans on, and we brought these turbans downtown. So it was a fantastic, special cultural occasion in the bar of the Royal Gardenia. As Delaney resumes. Oh, and that could be a long way. Oh. It's actually only just crept over, Andrew, because there is quite a breeze. Harry Tector thought he might have been in business just there. But it just made it over the line. Yeah, off the bat, this looked like it was going to go a long, long way from Hasver Tullis' eye. It was the first one he's really got out of the meat. And in the end, as mentioned, only around five yards over the rope. One of the bigger boundaries there today down towards... Long on and wide long on. Sazai's pummels this one down, so it's going to be one. That was the concern for Ireland, is that Sazai's there on 36 without really having gotten going. And 37 rocks. Which wouldn't be normal business. As bull as his eye. And he's a man that could make up for that pretty swiftly if he did get going. It was something we saw with both New Zealand and South Africa. Large appeal, Mark Hawthorne. Not really interested. Has been a huge amount of activity for the umpires through this series, really, has there, Andrew? No, not at all. Now that you say it, fairly few L, like real LBW appeals. I suppose in the first T20, I Rashid Khan had a few. Stern appeals turned down. But no, it's been a quiet few days for the umpires. Said that to Roly Black after game one. Bit of an armchair ride there for you, Roly. You're normally in the thick of things. Of course, umpiring has been pretty good throughout the, the Irish international summer, I would say. I think there's been... Some excellent decisions. Obviously, no DRS for this T20 series. And interestingly, too, to back that up, we've had no LBWs given in the series. Always like bringing you these tidbits of information, Andrew. I feel he's starting to get going here, is that right? Just hitting that ball a little bit firmer the last couple of overs. Well, when your first ball goes for six, Delaney has recovered well. I've been very impressed with Gareth Delaney through this series. If he can get himself a few runs, he'll be a really valuable member of this team, not that he isn't already, but it's the end of the 13th. 106 for one. What do you think Afghanistan will be looking towards? 160, 170? Oh, I was about to say 170, 175, I suspect, given the, the situation they're in at the moment. As you can see, the scorecard on your screen says I. 37 not out. Relatively subdued for his standards. Ramon Ligurbaz, superb for his 53. He departed to Josh Diddle in the previous over from the city end of the ground. And those are those bowling figures. Josh Diddle again leading the way. One for 18 from his three. But Garrett Delaney's three overs have been miserly as well. We're going to see Fionn Hand come back into the attack. So clearly Ireland favouring the seam options above the second spinner today. Well, they have enough of them. And again, I suppose... You know, it's that, that interesting piece, isn't it? You know, when you've got a debutante coming in, you have experience, you've just got to see how that will go. Could have easily turned his hand to 
Dockerel, but I would sense if spin is to continue, if we'll continue from the Dundonald end, you know, with the breeze to the shorter boundary would be very inviting. Yes, and also it's giving a prime opportunity for the likes of Hand and Hume to come in and be tested. There's no point bringing new players into a side and then not bowling them in, in difficult periods of the game. Trying to test the mettle of some players ahead of potentially World Cup squad inclusions. That's sharp work from Tector. And it was almost a run out there. It, certainly Zadran would have been short with the direct hit. And they do manage to scramble back, but say his heart was in his mouth halfway down there, Ibrahim Zadran. Tector always loves those situations. And again, you're absolutely right. I think a direct hit would have been the end of Zadran. Oh, and Sterling has taken an excellent catch. And Fionn Hand, on debut, takes a wicket. And he's absolutely thrilled, and rightly so. And yeah. as is Sterling. Big hugs and kisses for those two. A wonderful moment for Fionn Hand on debut. Yeah, very much so. And the fact that it was a really clever piece of bowling as well is the extra added cherry on top of the cake, really. He's completely foxed Hazratullah Zazai here with a slower delivery. We've seen this in the Interpros all year. Just completely outfoxes him. And Paul Sterling, yet again with a seriously good catch. One of the best... Sets of hands in the entirety of international cricket. Zazai goes for 39. Well, that's a very important wicket for Ireland. There's no doubt about that. And this was something Ireland did in game one. This strangulation in the middle overs. And uh, that, as you say, Andrew, a very good piece of bowling from Fionn Hand. And an excellent catch from Paul Sterling, who continues with the bathrobe. Was only talking to his father on the sideline and actually his girlfriend about this matter of like not a small but it's very sweaty apparently so needs the bath towel I believe I'm surprised actually too we didn't see Fionn Han's mother Brenda oh, I think she's been pacing around out the back of the tents I thought with Fionn getting his first wicket she might have been on the ground <laughs> She was out of the capping ceremony. It was a family affair out there. It's the first time I've seen a mother at a capping ceremony. Oh, well, good on her. Absolutely. Good. Much loved is our Brenda Hand. A very proud moment. That will live long in the memory. And great for Fionn Hand to take that first international wicket. One that he will never forget. Now bowling to Najibullah Zadran, who's pulled that away. Market there is down at fine legs. Just going to be the single. Now going back to Paul Sterling. I do understand it. And today's uh, towel is of relatively okay length. It was the one yesterday that was actually touching the floor. Well, the only reason I say it is the only Irish fielder with a towel. He doesn't even bowl used to of course very underused in my opinion in the bowling department you could bring that compliment to eight but he seems to be just a reluctant bowler right now Paul Sterling always I felt did a very good job and was underutilized by Ireland in that department it's often said a lot though about his bowling that he's a reluctant bowler but yet Every time he's played in the Vitality Blast, he's been used by whatever team he's played for, whether that be Middlesex, the year he was at North Hans, as a regular bowler. I'm like, what's the reason? He just puts the green jersey on and says, sorry, Skip. Go to someone else. That's a very good shot. From Ibrahim Zadran. And despite a very valiant attempt from Curtis Camfer at the deep mid-wicket boundary, it does run away for four. It's a boundary to end the 14th over Afghanistan, 114 for two. Good shot, that. Of 
course, we have two Zadrans at the crease, one a left-hander and one a right-hander. Nash Bulla, of course, left-hander, vastly experienced, vice-captain of the side. Spoke when you were off air. Been a thorn in Ireland's side over many years. The other T20 international debutant now coming back into the attack as well. Graham Hume equipped himself very well in his two overs in the power play. Well, his first over went for one, Andrew, from the Dundonald end. Obviously, I understand part of the tactic, but if you were Graham Hume, you'd be kind of saying skip. And another over from the Dundonald end. Start again from Hume. Well, just talking about Paul Sterling, he holds Ireland record in ODI. Six for 55 versus Afghanistan in Noida. Just for the record books, I just thought I'd bring you that today, Andrew. A mine of information, Alan. Always kept alive. Of course. All this information supplied by the great Stato. Jer Siggins at the back of the box. Always lovely to get these tidbits of information that are of great appeal to our viewing public. And that's just been helped on its way. And it's the maximum over Fionn Han there at deep backward square. Just helped on its way, really, this Andrew, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a good shot from Ibrahim Zadran. It's a slightly shorter leg side boundary hitting towards the pavilion this afternoon. That's a very good shot and backing up. I must say, Ibrahim Zadran's probably been the, the batter when you think of his 25 not out in the, in the first game where he came and hit some lusty blows at the end, batted nicely yesterday before departing for 17. It's probably been... The one Afghanistan batter that's looked most at home in these conditions. Well, he sets up lovely, doesn't he? He's lovely and steady at the crease, evenly balanced. Foot movement is good. Already 15 from nine deliveries faced. There can play comfortably either side of the wicket. Dockrell, ever attentive. Nice bullet. Somewhat getting in the way there of Tucker. Short. Probably lucky to get away with that, Graham Hume. That was very short and it just stood up and was wanting hitting, really. Of course, Graham Hume, a bowler on our own domestic first class Craig, we used to regularly refer to him as the miserly Graham Hume. Different ball game here, Andrew. Well, those that would have tuned into our IP50 coverage from last year in 2020 would have been. Inundated with you calling him miserly. <laughs> That's a better length. And given it the respect it deserves, easily through for a single. I think I've had to keep it going this year myself. You slightly slack on the IP50 coverage from yourself this year, huh? Well... Other well, jobs to be done, as you well know, Andrew, but always available in the main. Of course, for all our Irish viewers, Green Ball podcasts, it's all there. It's pulled away again, and they're going to come back for two this time round, and we'll do so successfully. 
Good over for Afghanistan, though. They're in a good position at the 15 over mark. 127 for two. They'll be spying a big enough score from here. Zad Ibrahim Zadran on 17. Najibullah Zadran on five. 171.80. Certainly looks on at this stage, and the backbone of that has been loss of very few wickets and the two wickets to fall Fionn Hand of course on debut and Josh Little the ever impressive man of the match of course yesterday and uh, hasn't been a bad display of bowling a, probably a shabby enough beginning just lacked that little bit of oomph but uh, it looks a good pitch Andrew again hasn't taken a huge amount of turn and as I say that I'm about to bid farewell where I leave way for Nathan Johns thank you very much Alan that's Mark Adair he's coming back into the attack and is immediately slammed over his head and slammed over his head for a one bounce four well, that's some way of being greeted back into the attack from Adair, who hasn't been quite at his best today. And Ibrahim Zadran looks in imperious form. Yeah, what a shot. I was climbed into it over extra cover. That's a touch over pitch from Mark Adair. And with the way Afghanistan are batting today, not too surprising to see those types of deliveries disappear. We see the value of wickets in hand now, aren't we? Afghanistan had hardly any yesterday, having, losing, having lost plenty of early wickets in their innings. But today, only two down with... The, at the 15 over mark, they've it's a completely different game for them. Just a little bit of a delay here. I'm not sure whether what Rowley Black was looking for. I think maybe just confirmation that it definitely was a, a boundary for match referee Graham McRae, probably surveying our. Pictures pulled away. It's another lovely shot. It's just going to be one though. This time round, yeah, a good bit of work out there from Graham Hume. He's picked that up at deep square instantly. Was, his first step was excellent. It's got him into a good position there. To cut off the second run. Yeah, it's probably the first time this series that we've seen. Afghanistan properly on top. I know in the first game they finished well with that last over of 21 off market there that gave them a bit of momentum, but up until that point, Ireland would have been relatively happy. So this is an interesting challenge for this Irish side. It's the first time in three games they've been properly under the pump. Yeah, I think it's conducive to, to good cricket all round, to be honest, for Ireland. It will mean they'll have to chase a, a big enough score again if they want to go and and seal this series 3-0 and make sure that there's no coming back for Afghanistan but it's just been a different approach just a little bit more busyness at the crease from Afghanistan and it's good to see Gurbaz back in the runs has her as eye as much as he probably wasn't at his absolute best today I think he probably just gives a, an air of confidence him playing almost it's very short again from Mark Adair, dug into the pitch and slower as well. And Ibrahim Zadran's almost swung his back out there, trying to get that one over backward point. Fails to get any contact. Persisting with this short ploy, and they're going to take on the fielder. And it's going to be turned down. Ibrahim Zadran's back for two there. Good running between the two Zadrans here. And they get back for two. Yeah, that would have been close. Certainly looked very close from our angle. Good bit of work out there in the deep. Looks like it's Curtis Camphor at deep mid wicket. But like you said, excellent piece of running. Adair's doing a good job here of making Zadran hit towards the larger square leg boundary, but the result of that is he can get two. This one's carved away over the offside, not particularly well timed. 
Darko keeps it down to a single. Yeah, decent over overall at this stage of the innings for Mark Adair. Nine runs from 136 for two. Four overs to go. We'll certainly be looking at a score in and around 180 from here, you'd have to think. Oh, at least. At the very, very minimum, I think, from an Afghanistan point of view. Eight wickets in hand, four, four overs left. You know, ten and over gets them towards that 180 mark, but I think they'll definitely be looking for more than that. This is a very interesting call here. I'm skipper. Andrew Milburney, he is going to bring on his leg spinner to bowl the 17th. Oh, and don't bowl as many overs of spin in the death as they have done in previous years. Simi Singh fulfilled that role a lot of the time. He's not in the squad these days. Big challenge here for Delaney. Especially as it's not the biggest leg side boundary in the world. He will be spinning the ball away from that, of course, to the right-hander. Again, for Ireland, this is a, a key opportunity, though, to, to test out what you have, test the credentials of somebody like Gareth Delaney. But it's interesting that he's bowling more and more of these overs as confidence in him grows clearly. I think towards the beginning of the summer, he was bowling exclusively in the middle overs. I think yesterday he did bowl one over towards the end as well. So it's, it's, it's a progression that's going on from him. And as we see, he did bowl both the 16th and the 18th yesterday we can quibble about whether the 16th over is death overs or not but I think the point still stands is confidence in him from his skipper to bowl these crucial overs is growing well, that's a good delivery he looked like a wrong one it was yeah you can see Najibul Zadran just signalling to his partner that that did just come out the front of the hand he didn't pick it well he's a very useful tool if he's going to bowl as well as this and One of his poorer deliveries just dragged into the ground. And Hachimala Zadran just muscles it over extra cover. And Harry Tector has to come around to wide long off. Easy two. short of George Dockrell. They're a deep cover for one. It was in the air for quite a while on that occasion. And well, he swung so hard he's lost his bat. That was Zadran. But yeah, that was an interesting one, wasn't it? Not the bat, it looked like it was going straight down George Dockrell's throat. And the offside sweeper just ended up dying on him. from Gareth Delaney though just talking about whether he can do it showing himself up to very good capabilities here at a tricky stage Afghanistan looking to really press home entering this last four overs and they've only managed to muster up five from the first five deliveries key delivery this he oh, goes short it was a quicker delivery and after such a good over from Gareth Delaney, I just wonder whether that really was the option. Just clearly trying to just dart one in to get rid of that ball. And Najibul Azadran thanks, says, thank you very much, and heaves this one into the trees. Yes, I think what's done for Delaney there is you can see Najibullah has just moved his feet ever so slightly. As Delaney's gone into his gather, and I think perhaps he thought he was going to walk down the track at him, and he thought he bought fast into the pitch, so... Maybe a double bluff, or maybe he was just moving across to the to the offside to access the leg side. But he picked up the length brilliantly and very quickly, and that was the key to that shot. Well, slightly tarnished the figures of Delaney, who bowled really very nicely today, and his four overs for 33. Josh Little is going to come back on to bowl over 18, and not only could they do with a a tight over, but they probably could do with a wicket here as well. Try and get in a, a new batter at this stage of the innings. You might get a dot ball or two as a result. I think the other thing we can say about that over, and you know, we, we spoke about Delaney bowling at the death yesterday. I think it was a completely different situation, wasn't it? Afghanistan 
didn't have anywhere near as many wickets in hand when he bowled at the death yesterday, and it's a completely different challenge bowling to the tail enders. I think it was it was Rashid and Navin Al Hack who were facing him, if I remember correctly, and that's obviously a completely different prospect and a much better matchup for Ireland to have your leg spinner bowling to him then than it was perhaps at this stage of the game bowling to two set batters and we've got eight wickets left in the shed. Good start from Little. Abraham Zadran only able to muscle that one to mid off for one. It's been a much better compiled innings though from Afghanistan. No wickets in that power play and despite them being relatively circumspect to start, just the 41 runs from the power play. Just goes to show you the gears you can go through as a result. Well it's probably something that they haven't necessarily reacted to so far in this series is that you can actually catch up reasonably quickly and that's always the case here at Stormont. We saw it in some of the New Zealand games here. Someone like Glenn Phillips played a very slow innings for him to start off in one of the games and ended up accelerating rapidly at the death and putting his side into a winning score. That tends to be the way to go about things here. Batting first on Stormont rather than going all guns blazing from ball one. And it probably just has taken the Afghans three games to, to get into that mindset. Don't get me wrong, by all means, in a ground like Malahide, perhaps much flatter, much shorter boundaries, you probably can go for that all-out aggression from ball one. Pummeled down the ground by Ibrahim Zadran. A super shot from him. to standing and delivering. Over mid-off, one bounce. And into the advertising hoardings. Just gets his line wrong here, does Josh Little. I mean, you can see why he's trying to bowl the length that he is. Heavy length with trying to get him to pull out to the larger square leg boundary, but it's too wide. It's easy for a player at this stage of the game who's set just to sit deep in his crease and flay that line away over mid-off. It's going to be more runs. It's going to be four more. This one wasn't where Zadran would have wanted. But that being said, it was short. It was quick from Josh Little. And he's got enough bat on it. And it's ran away for four. Well, if the previous delivery was Little getting his line wrong, he's actually got this pretty much spot on the money. The field is set for that type of delivery. And he's beaten him for pace. And he has his right leg back on the short ball. He's just managed to get it too fine. That's just one of those. You go back to your mark and you say... Not a lot I could have done about that. And this time round, just feathers a little. One behind Zadran was looking for that paddle over the short fine leg fielder and has done nothing more than just paddling it straight into the hands of Lorcan Tucker and Ibrahim Zadran goes for 36. Well, perhaps Josh Little has gotten away with one there. He swapped the field around, finally got mid-off back for that maybe slightly fuller length or wider line, and he's pretty much bowled another shorter delivery, which he's tried to ramp. And he's ended up just running it. I'm not sure if it was off the face or oh, it's off the glove. Just too quick for him. Flicks the glove, and it's a simple chance for Lorcan Tucker, but it's a risky delivery, that, with fine leg inside the circle. Certainly, but... At the end of the day, it is a wicket for Little and a, and a needed one as well. Brings the captain, Mohammed Nabi, to the crease. Can be so dangerous in these instances. Can Nabi? Hasn't shown thus far in this series with the bat, but a perfect chance for him. 13 deliveries left, his side are in a good position. All they need is a good finish. Off the face for one. It's going to complete the 18th over and Josh Little spell. 18 gone, Afghanistan. 158 for three. Mm. 
a decent spell from Josh Dill today. Not the economic figures we saw yesterday, but I think two for 29 or four overs. In given the situation of the game, and it probably is a bit of a better pitch as well than, than Thursday's game, you would take that. I think the vital component for Little is always that wickets column. When he's in rhythm and he's in his groove, he's rushing batsmen, he's, he's bowling into the pitch, he's challenging a short ball play, and he did remember bats out Ramon Gurbaz earlier on today. Graham Hume is going to come to bowl the 19th over here, so two overs in the power play for Hume and to bowl the 19th, so he's really replicating what we've seen quite a lot from Barry McCarthy, I suppose. And opportunity for him to potentially show off his ability at the death and that's a very good way to start yeah just nails as well your wide yorker rather it's an interesting field he's on his deep point but rather than a, someone else out there for the wide yorker as we've seen on many occasions this series Ireland have actually got a deep extra cover so they obviously think that Nabby's going to try and flay this one pretty straight through the offside and then apart from that it's quite regulation deep mid wicket long on long off Gets it past that point in the ring. But they can't prevent two. As Mohamed Nabi squeezes it out. At this stage of the innings, Ireland will certainly take that. Interesting. Nabi's practice seems a little reverse paddle, I think I'd call it. I wonder if he's thinking, oh, if you're going to fire it outside off. Maybe that's a shot he'll pull out. We'll see. And they were searching for two, but good work from Balberni means that they keep it to one. Well, I tell you what, I think if Mohamed oh, Nabi had just turned and went there, I think he probably had a decent chance of getting home. This is a bit of hesitation cost him there. Andrew Balberni was always running away. His momentum was taking him away from where he needed to throw it. Slightly feel legible as Adran more fancied the strike. <laughs> a little bit. I'm not sure he was majorly desperate to get back for two there and perhaps given that he's the man 16 off 10 as well within his rights to think that he might be the man in a better position to, to tee off and maybe give the late impetus to this Afghanistan innings but instead he swung and missed and despite a long hard stare at Mark Hawthorne it's a top ball he's not happy with that at all he's Najibullah uh, Zadran Neither is Mohammed Nabi. He's <laughs> giving his two cents as well. Hand on hip. He's not happy at all. I have to say, it's difficult to see from our angle. But Graham Hume is persisting with his wide Yorkers, and the field is set for it here. Oh, that's length, and that's an enormous stake. From Najib Bulazadra, that's one of the biggest we've seen all week. Unfortunately, he missed his length, Graham Hume. It was in the slot, and my lord, that's gone a long way. Go fetch. Well, somebody remarkably has found the ball, considering the record that those Stormont bushes have of devouring balls. They managed to find that very quickly. I wonder if it's the same ball that went in there. There's more than a few in there. But anyway, like you said, Graham Hume missed his length, and probably was going a little bit straighter than. He wanted to as well. Good execution this time, but even better batting from Najibullah Zadran. That's right beside us in the commentary box. It's almost burst into the production tent. What a fantastic shot from Zadran. And completely within his rights, as I say, to turn down that second from Mohammed Nabi a couple of deliveries ago, and he's plundered two big sixes. Well, he's nearly cost us a brand new camera, so he has, that was a matter of inches from hitting the camera to our left there. You know, this time, we said before, Graham Hume probably got his line wrong with going too straight. Well, he got it right this time outside off, but once again, missed his length, and Zadran is in too good nick to miss out on that length delivery. Yeah, runs flowing for Afghanistan here. 173 for three with just an over remaining. 
in theory we've seen a lot of the time here in Stormont before these types of scores don't get chased so Ireland are going to have to go some here in the second innings need a good final over from Mark Adair can he stand up to the test it's a low full toss it's a fantastic shot from Mohamed Nabi but an even better piece of work from Harry Tector they're going to come back for three and Mohamed Nabi is going to be caught short so really good work from Camfer who then palmed the ball to Harry Tector and he'll be given the run out there and Mohamed Nabi's caught short of his ground going back for the third oh well I think that third was just a free hit for for Nabi in terms of getting down the other end because it was always priority to get Zadran back on strike considering the way he's hit, hitting the ball at the minute so to get two and get him back on strike yes you've lost your wicket but it's still a pretty good result for Afghanistan yeah I think as long as that ball hadn't gone to the boundary I think the, the, the hope would, would have been we're always going three there yeah they would, the hope would have been to try try an odd number certainly because that's what they needed Zadran's just hit his last two balls for six so probably sensible cricket for Afghanistan pretty selfless cricket from Mohammed Nabi as well which is good to see knowing the situation he's a man that's seen plenty of situations in his career interesting to see the plan here I wonder if that last stroke over extra cover from Zadran has prompted Ireland to put a deep extra cover out which means he managed to squeeze out one of those wide Yorkers he's in business but Adair didn't go for his wide Yorker the field was set for it and he surprised Zadran he's gone pace off it's a good bit of bowling yeah, very good piece of bowling from Mark Adair. Completely foxing Zadran with that slower delivery. A double bluff there, really. Well, it is and it isn't. I mean, the field is still set for that delivery. He's got plenty of fielders out in front of square on the leg side. So he's given himself two options here. Either going wide and full or pace off. That was neither. That was straight in the slot. And it's deposited over long on. Zadran's in the groove here for Afghanistan. Yeah, another tremendous shot from Najibullah Zadram. That ball's almost ended up on the moon. It's gone that high in the air. He's just got this ability to hit the ball such a long way, both distance-wise and in the air. And nothing Gareth Delaney nor George Dockle could do at long on or deep mid-wicket, respectively. Now, Ireland have to be careful here with these last three deliveries with Zadran in this type of form. He hasn't got any of that. I mean, he's got actually such a little amount of it that it's short of George Dockrell. And they managed to just get back for two. Well, he's missed out there, has Zadran. He's shuffled across his crease again, trying to access the leg side. He's actually gotten a low full toss. But like you said, Andrew, no timing at all. And... I think George it actually caught George Docker a little bit by surprise because he was almost going back on the boundary expecting one to go over his head. Another big hit from Najibullah Zadran. Has he got the distance? You bet he has. He's got it over Gareth Delaney there at long arm. Zadran moves to 42 from just 17 deliveries. And this is hurting Ireland at the business end. Yeah, pace off again from Adair, but he probably just needs to drag the length back if he's going to go to his pace off options. It's still in the slot. It's still there for Zadran to free his arms in his half. And yes, he hasn't got all of it. He's only just about crept over the rope, but that's just what happens in T20 cricket. Yeah, you can feel a little bit hard done by there, Mark Adair, when you've a half outfoxed Zadran, really. And he's mistimed it. Still gone for six. Just over that long arm boundary. The Afghanistan supporters in full voice. Right beside the scoreboard. And Sadran's flicked that one away. And could have picked out Fionn Hand. And has. Who takes a catch to finish off his day in the field. On his first T20 international market there gets a wicket. It won't mean too much to him. But... At least it's a dot ball to finish off. And Afghanistan finish 189 for five from their 20 overs. And we'll be going through the cards and a little bit of discussion after a quick break.
shows you the value of wickets in hand and Zadran at the end did what he's done on many occasions against Ireland massive 42 from I think 18 deliveries faced so it'll be very interesting to see how Ireland respond here because it's a good opening attack that Afghanistan have for Rookie and uh, Naveen good bowlers Paul Sterling just through this series hasn't really got his timing right 16 or 17 innings without a T20 50 for Ireland obviously needing very few runs to hit the 3,000 international mark and there's not many who have done that in international T20 cricket and of course Balburnie back in form after a horrid series against New Zealand and South Africa and it was pleasing to see that so again the beginning here will be very important and Nabi talked about that at the toss just the value of partnerships and that's what they did today Andrew certainly and they're in a very good position here going in to the run chase Faruqi is going to start us off from the city end Paul Starling's on strike Andy Balberni at the non-strikers end for Ireland just drifting down the leg side it's going to be a wide gets the Irish total up and running I think the worrying thing about Afghanistan is when they have these runs on the board when you've got the likes of Rashid Khan Majid bowling when you have to go at them and I think in the last couple of games Ireland have been able to milk they're going to have to take aggressive options well, I thought in game one they certainly went at them very aggressively. Look, and Tucker at three swept in extremely well. And just seemed to get up a fraction caught. Paul Sterling. Hip area. Just that previous delivery from Farouk. It's always amazing and interesting. You know, on the left arm. Seymour wide down the leg side in appeal, in despair. You know, you're just not going to get away with it. Roly Black dutifully obliged with the arms out. So two to Ireland now. Oh, and gone. again, Afghans fielding. Relatively straightforward stop there at extra cover, but the disease continues. Yeah, hasn't been their best fielding effort in this series so far. Obviously still plenty of time to resurrect and resolve. Should they win this game? Gives them a real chance going into next week's games on Monday and Wednesday to try and come back in this series. But for Ireland, they'll want to be nipping that thought in the bud pretty quickly. It's a full toss, and Paul Sterling's just ended up plinking one straight to cover. Usman Ghani has taken a very straightforward catch. And a very tame way for Paul Sterling to depart, but he must depart without troubling the scores. A very tame dismissal is right. I don't know really where. We'll only see on the replay from our vantage position here. He looked to be working that or trying to work it to leg, which is understandable. Obviously, there's less fielders that side. Oh, no, he wasn't. Just maybe it was the way the hand was thrown. The bat it was really wide. And as you say, he clunked that. And that's an incredibly valuable wicket that for Afghanistan and Paul Sterling is struggling started this particular series he needed 60 to reach 3,000 runs he's finding it hard and he's gone for none and that will certainly have Afghanistan's tails up yeah, it's just the manner of that dismissal that will disappoint Sterling Obviously such a fantastic player for Ireland, but she just ended up getting nothing on that. It was a poor delivery from Faruqi as well. Brings Lorcan Tucker to the crease. It's an earlier stage than we're used to. Well, in a sense, I got fooled that really the width of the delivery, as you say, Andrew, was significant. 
took her into his work straight away. No more than a defensive push. That's gone firmly to mid-off, and it's probably a measure of the form that Lorcan Tucker has been on. He's always been an extreme talent, struggled initially, which can happen a lot of players at international level. But Ireland have stuck with him, and he's stuck at it, and he's matured. And this elevation to three, as we've spoken about, has been fantastic for him. Calls for one. Hallmark of Tucker's game is how good he is between the wickets. Scrambles through for a single, gets himself off the mark. Yeah, I agree with you, Andrew. He really he injects life into the other batters with that efficiency of running incredibly quick between the wickets. Something we've seen quite a few partnerships as an example between him and Tector where you know, they seem to be in the same wavelength and often, you know, when you have that, you don't even need a call. It's a look, it's a nudge. You just know where one is and, you know, that complementary understanding can really rattle an inner field. Well fielded by Rashid Khan, a backward point. Completes the first over, a great start for Afghanistan. Four for one, Ireland. Yes, indeed. Eventful is what you'd call that over. Kind of had everything, really. Just looking back on that replay, that ball, as you say, was so wide from Faruqi to Sterling. Nearly just threw his hands at it one-handed and spooned it to just wide of point. But... T20 cricket can change very quickly. Get an established partnership going. But I've been impressed, Andrew, throughout this series by Faruqi and Naveen. Faruqi indeed went to the IPL, didn't play any cricket, but got great experience. Miasmatola over Zai. Who's going to open the bowling? So it's not going to be Naveen Ul Haq. So a little bit of a change from what we've seen in the first two games. And Lower's Eye, a chance with the new ball. This boy is quick. If he gets it right, he's regularly in the 140s. Bowls with a lovely action. And only speaking to Hamid. Previously, he was joined as part of the Afghanistan, speaking about Omarazi. No coaching of any significance. It was something that was talked about years ago. Glenn McGrath came from up country. Everything was just natural. It's only when he came down to Sydney, playing his grade cricket, that the skills and attributes began to emerge. And he kind of feels Omarazi could really benefit from something like that himself. Maybe this inexperience is just showing that two rather loose, wide deliveries, Andrew. Well, I saw after that first delivery that Mohammed Nabi was seriously questioning Mark Hawthorne on it. And it went down the leg side. I think the rationale behind that was there was one when Mohammed Nabi was batting. With, I think it was Ibrahim Zadran at Roly Black's end, where he moved so much that I think Roly Black was of the indication that it would have hammered into his pads should he stayed of where he was. But Tucker is kind of advancing and advancing to the offside. And uh, Homer's eyes missing that leg stump. And he's done so three in a row here. Yeah, I think that was Zadran indeed. Interesting that Paul Sterling's first duck in 36 innings since Afghanistan annoyed it. Don't often see Paul Sterling with ducks, but there you are.
Stifled appeal. Tucker trying to help that one on its way. and You can see the option given the pace that Omer's eye is bowling at. And fine leg in the ring. I think from an Afghanistan point of view though, you like seeing Lork and Tucker trying to play that shot at this stage of the innings. You're making me giggle a bit there, Andrew Blair. While I'm a big fan of Lork and Tucker when he plays strong shots. If he can stay steady and still, yes, but a lot of the time he's on the move. I think he's benefited over the last short period of time with that. A proper cricket shot. Again, using the pace of Omarazi and Getting that away wide of third man for four. And that's much better, Andrew. Definitely with on offer from Omarzai and Tucker staying still. Carving this one away. Wide of third man. First boundary. Another thick edge again, and it's going to be just one down the third man on this occasion. With a bit of a bobble. We can't really see from here, but of course there were a number of those yesterday that made their way to the boundary. Afghanistan's fielding was very, very average. Strange over this, three wides to get us underway. Oh, to be 19 again, Andrew, and to be able to bowl into the mid-40s, 140s. Yeah, certainly showing that youthful energy, that youthful pace. Reminds me a little bit of Umran Malik, the way he's trying to fizz this ball down, and slightly like Umran Malik in the fact that it can seemingly go everywhere. Well, I've often heard with quick bowlers, and I'll continue after that. Ireland 12 for one after two. But the encouragement when you speak to higher profile people in the game talking about quick bowling. But if you've got the ability to bowl quick, bowl quick. Don't worry about direction too much from time to time, particularly when you're young. You can learn your trade, but the asset is pace. I always found that of great interest. You can talk too much technical with young bowlers who've got the ability to bowl it quick. That will come. Slower and hoisted into the leg side by Lorcan Tucker and hoisted all the way for his first six in Ireland's first six of this reply. Thought momentarily he'd been slightly deceived by Faruqi there, but... Not a bit of it. Certainly not. And if you're going to favour a side, there's anything a little bit of breeze. It's to that leg side. It's obviously that little bit longer. We're four pitches across today, but heavy punishment against the Irish bowlers to this, the city end of the ground, hitting towards that city end of the ground. And over square, we saw earlier, says I trying to get it to the Donald end and a bit more difficult. In golfing parlours, Andrew hit the seven iron when the nine iron might have been the thought club into a breeze. Always talk about a two club wind. Same in cricket, you've got to give it that little bit of extra oomph. Oh, well, he certainly did, Tucker. This could be an intriguing game of cricket, Andrew. I think the pitch is good if Ireland can build a base. 
That's oh. another down. And it's a great catch by Rashid Khan at backward point. It's not a dissimilar dismissal. This time Andy Balberni, the exact same as Paul Sterling, squirting a full delivery into the offside. And Balberni's going to have to depart for just a single. And Ireland are losing wickets. And it may be a chase that they could have done, but they do need to stop losing wickets at this early stage. Well, it was Afghanistan's strength. They didn't lose wickets. And again, Balberni trying to give himself that bit of room. And he toe-ended it as a result in a very good catch from Rashid Khan. Much to the joy and excitement of the rest of his team. And Afghanistan have just looked a bit up a gear today. One gets the sense, Andrew, that this partnership could have a vital bearing on the match. This axis of Tucker, Tector, Dockrell. I'm delighted to see George Dockrell elevated to five in this Irish batting lineup. Clearly, the position, in my opinion, for him just always has that sense of authority, particularly in this format of the game, too. I think he's worthy of that number five position on merit. Yeah, I would agree. That being said, I think if there was another wicket in the next over or two, I would highly doubt that George Jockle will come out at number five. I think that's been more situation basis that we've seen it. I'd have thought they may opt perhaps for Curtis Camfer. Try to keep the likes of Jockle and Delaney certainly in that second 10 overs but sometimes it's hard to do when you are losing wickets Tector facing up to Faruqi who's taken two and you can feel that breeze now Andrew can't you it's coming behind our tent here and you can see those trees right opposite us where Tucker hit that six fairly strong breeze it has to be said can happen at this time of the evening and tends to calm down. We've had three beautiful days, obviously, as the country, the island of Ireland, has shared. It's such a strong breeze that you've managed to put half your water over the commentary box there. Oh, we've got this new black tablecloth that was... Blair, I'm going to have to talk to my colleagues in HG, HBV about getting some form of shield for a very nice TV set we have in front of us, but it's always looking to improve HBV. Tector gets off the mark. A busy single to end out the third over Ireland, 20 for two. Yeah, I think there's no need for panic. Ireland back deep. Tector and Tucker will be aware of that. I think in terms of how they go about this, Tucker will probably be the aggressor. Tector, I think, will look to, you know, at this stage, being in in the third over, he'll look to settle in. I might be wrong, of course, but I think it's so important that this pair establish a partnership if they can I think it's absolutely imperative for their chances in this game. They have to make sure they get to a situation where they've got some sort of wickets in hand when you're looking at that last five, six overs. You could probably go and chase 60, 65 runs in the last five overs if you've got the requisite wickets in hand. But there's no point looking at that type of run chase and being six or seven down at that stage because it just won't happen. Nabi and Hack. Comes into the attack, so Omer's eye given just the one over up top. Tector using his feet, and drives out into the offside, and he's coming back for two, and gets back for two, and even though it looked for a little bit, when that ball was in the air, that Tector may be a tad short, cutting relatively comfortably in the end. 
I'd say at one stage, Harry Tector had his heart in his mouth there, but again, it's the encouraging sign of these two. I think when they play together, they feed off one another, Tector and Tucker. Very close pals, of course. Know each other very well. And this close-knit cricket community that Ireland is. That's a little thin edge, and Hector's going to have to go. It's three down for Ireland in the power play. Navin Hack gets in on the act. It was a short and wide delivery. Hector trying to flay this one over the offside and just gets a thin edge through to keeper Roman Alagurbaz. And you can see the excitement in the Afghan camp. Hector on his way. Loose shot, really. One would have to say there wasn't really a huge amount of commitment in it, and he'd be disappointed with that. That was very wide, and you can see it head to the skies. Yeah, you can see. You've heard the clunk, a slap of the bat in his pad. That's going to be a tall order from Ireland from here. Naveen making the breakthrough. One would question... Again, you're absolutely right, Andrew Curtis Camp for joining Lorcan Tucker. Your words of wisdom constantly amaze. I wouldn't go that far, Alan. <laughs> I do get the odd one right. Yeah. You certainly did yeah. on this occasion. Just think they try as a premise to keep the likes of Delaney and Dockrell to come in later on in the innings, but they're in a a poor situation here, Ireland chasing a big score, 190. They had to get off to a good start. They had to have a good power play. And Camfer was almost gone. First ball there, leading edge. And took it away into the leg side. And Rashid Khan almost scooped up his second catch of the afternoon. Just looked as if he didn't pick that up, really. And the Afghani attack... Hearts are lifted. There just seems a different buzz around the team. Amazing what Wickets does. There's a real buzz about them. Naveen Hack, Very clever bowler. Has this stutter reaction coming in and everything in those last few strides. Very good cocked wrist position. Can bowl a heavy ball when he wants to. That's a terrific shot though from Curtis Camper. Over pitched from Naveen Hack. It was a long half volley, and Camfer said, yes, please. It's the sort of delivery, Andrew, that on a Sunday afternoon, club game of cricket, long half volley like that, you just love that type of delivery. I wouldn't know that myself. I'd probably squirt that one through third man. But... <laughs> For you, perhaps. Love a long half volley. <laughs> Little change in the field now. Cover goes back out to the boundary. Third man comes into the ring. Deep square leg, the other man back. Navi no hack as well. So those two fielders out square of the wicket. Again, time for... Curtis Camfer obviously blasted onto the scene in ODI cricket. Early stages of his career. This format, a different kettle of fish. Always contended this is the way the game has gone, the most difficult format. Andrew, you've got to be on your game really from the word go. Good bowling, though, from Navin al -Hak. Just the six runs from it and that wicket of Harry Tector. Good start for Afghanistan. Ireland, 26 for three after four. It was a similar picture for Afghanistan when they batted outside of those three wickets in the wickets column. And it was really the foundation for that total of 189 it's always interesting to look across Duckworth Lewis now at 51 in Ireland, 26 for three. 
just gives you the indication of the effect of what wickets can do. And now Rashid Khan coming into the tack. Went wicketless in his first two games. Quite extraordinary. Rashid Khan, wicketless two matches. It's a long, long time since that's happened. When you feel that Rashid Khan coming on here is Afghanistan really trying to hammer home this advantage. It's a difficult situation for Ireland here. Obviously require over 10 and over already. They've been able to play Rashid Khan on his merits in those first two games. Captain wicketless, but hasn't been going at above seven and over. Took her on the sweep and get through comfortably for one. Sasai at 45. Not the most athletic. So quite wisely Ireland profiting from that. Small bit of turn there from Rashid Khan. Normally he bowls that googly wide of off stump, trying to drag the batter into an expansive drive, or trying to chop one away. Cam for certainly circumspect to start against Rashid Khan. Difficult to ask to come in. In the power play, it's the thing about batting in the middle overs in T20 cricket. It's Curtis Camphor. The last number of times we've seen him for Ireland, he's been coming in with only a couple of overs to go, potentially with only 15, 20 required in a run chase. Suddenly he's been thrust in in the fifth over facing Rashid Khan. Completely different kettle of fish. One from the over so f sorry, I thought we'd miscalculated there. When it's the end of the fifth with Ireland twenty seven for three. At this stage I will bid farewell. And Nathan Johns will replace myself. Navin will hack to continue with Ireland 27 for three after five overs. Tucker gets enough on that, gets more than enough on that. One bounce four over the keeper's head and Ireland are going to have to guess plenty more of those, Nathan, if they're going to have to make a fist to this run chase. It's been a regular option for Lorcan Tucker across this series. He clearly enjoys walking down at the seamers and he feels like he needs to be aggressive and having seen him coming fired it in short and well Tucker's done for pace there but he's he's got enough on it like you said his bright start to batting at number three for Ireland continuing here Tucker 18 from just 10 deliveries he's watched a bit of carnage at the other end mind Opportunity if he hits. Big appeal and turned down by Mark Hawthorne. Hawken Tucker. And be glad he's that quick between the wickets. I tell you what, it's an absolutely stunning bit of fielding from Muhammad Nabi at mid off. That ball was drilled to him, but he picked it up, timed his run to the ball nicely to take it on the half volley, threw the stumps down brilliantly. Mark Hawthorne almost didn't have time to get into position there. <laughs> Wonder if he did or not. Well, it was certainly close. I do think Lorcan Tucker probably, to the benefit of the doubt, had made his ground. I 
Camfer premeditating that scoop very early and Navino Hack able to mix up his delivery. That's two deliveries in this over now that Navino Hack has at the very last second seen what a batter is doing in his crease and changed. We saw him bump Tucker when he walked at him. This time he sees Camfer go for the ramp and he responds by taking all the pace off the delivery. It's fantastic, that ability to be able to change your plan at such a late stage in your delivery stride. He's got plenty of air on that Curtis Camfer and enough distance as well. It's going to be one bounce. And away for a boundary. That's a much needed boundary for Camfer as well. That ball's absolutely flown off the bat immediately. My response was that's gone straight up in the air and it just kept going and going. And yeah, like you said, Curtis Camfer got underneath that one plenty. Probably a bit more premeditation we've seen earlier on in the over, but this time he gets enough on it. This time a chance though, and it's been plucked out of the at mid arm by Najibullah Zadran. Good catch from him. Navino Hack's got two, and Ireland have lost a fourth wicket in the power play. And Curtis Camfer trying to repeat the dose, picks out mid arm and departs for eight. Yeah, it's a frustrating one for Curtis Camfer. He's actually read the delivery quite well. He's seen the Navino Hack went to his pace off option once again. He delayed his stroke. He just hasn't timed it. The ball was in the slot. It was there to be hit over mid-on. He delayed the shot, but just didn't get enough bat on it to clear mid-on. Yeah, frustrating way for him to depart. You'll see here from Navinol Hack yes. holding that one back, but it was a pretty straightforward catch in the end for Najibullah Zadran. Yes, we could just see on the replay, perhaps Camfer, he delayed the shot enough in terms of bringing the bat angle down, but I think in terms of bringing that back leg through and getting into his power stance, yeah, that, the slower ball probably disrupted the timing there. And that's why he just couldn't get the elevation on it. Well, here's a man that we were saying yesterday when he came out to the crease that he could do with a score. Is Gareth Delaney? Well, he's got a fantastic opportunity to to get one here with Ireland in a big hole. Run rate, required run rates nearly up at 11 now. We all know Gareth Delaney's an aggressive player. Well, he's got almost a free license here to be be aggressive and be the hero for Ireland. Yeah, good opportunity for Gareth. And again, like I said with Curtis Camfer, when you're in the middle order, you have to be kind of able for so many different positions to bat. That being said for Gareth, he had a spell at number three, so he won't be unused to batting at this time of the innings. Fix that one off. Bad straight to short. Fine. No. Does well. A very good power play for Afghanistan. Ireland 36 for four after six. And it's interesting to see as well, Andrew. We've been having a few discussions amongst ourselves about what they do with George Dockwell in this in this innings and whether do they hold him back. Is he Ireland's number five now after his his good form? And I think today gives us our answer. He he's Ireland's finisher. There's no designated spot for him. And to come in in the power play is is definitely too early for him as far as the skipper Andrew Balburnie is concerned. Yeah, it does look like it. That's a pretty sad looking card at the moment for Ireland. Paul Sterling and Andy Balburnie, just the one run between the two of them. Texture and Camfer, the other two men go both to Navi on Hack. Tucker on 19, the mainstay of the innings so far. Well, she'd can to continue his spell from the city end. It's Andrew Blair White departs the country box and that's an outside edge and that will race away. I don't think Mujib Burma has got a chance of catching up to that one and as that one rolls into the boundary rope, I'll say good afternoon to Hamid. Good afternoon. An ideal start for Afghanistan to this. Defense. If I can sum it up in one sentence, it has clicked for Afghanistan today. So far so good. They they 
uh, did not repeat the mistakes uh, in their batting uh, from the previous games and so far they have done well with, with their bowling as well. Yeah, slip in place for Rashid Khan. Tucker goes to the sweep, big shout, turned down. Rashid Khan is absolutely furious. <laughs> he's on his knees, he's begging for the decision. He can't believe it. Well, how often do you see those missed sweep shots leading to LBW decisions? Unfortunately, our angle here, it's difficult to, to see exactly why that might have been given, not out. But perhaps Rashid Khan's always targeting those stumps. If it was a googly, perhaps maybe moving down the leg side. Yep. The problem with sweeping Rashid Khan is the speed at which the ball comes at you. It's usually much faster and that. It's very easy to be. Goes to the sweep again. Half an appeal from behind the stumps, but I'm not sure that made contact with anything. It's a good piece of work. A short find keeps Tucker on strike. It's interesting, actually, you say it's very difficult to sweep Rashid. That's something that Ireland have actually done very well in the first Indeed. two games. They've Indeed. managed to sweep him. Is that Rashid bowling a little bit fuller than normal? Is he not getting his normal zip off the pitch, do you think? We do need to remember that Ireland plays Afghanistan more than any other uh, ICC member, probably. So I think the Irish batsmen are more used to Rashid Khan's bowling than any other country. That could be one factor. And the fact that they are sweeping it quite often, I mean, I grew up with the saying, if you don't read it, sweep it. It's difficult to read Rashid Khan, and probably sometimes the safest thing to do is to to just go go for the sweep, but they are used to playing Rashid Khan. They 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 have played it well, and they they were brilliant against him in the previous game. I think. Well, he's got two games wicketless so far. Not something that's happened before for him. There's another sweep shot, yep. and it's gone very fine. But Afghanistan have adjusted their plans accordingly. They've got the, that field set for the sweep. So it's interesting now. The sweep shot has become a scoring option for Ireland, but with this field, with the backward square, it's it's no longer a boundary option. No, it's not. But I think uh, Ireland would be happy as long as they take some runs off Rashid Khan. I don't think he's the, the Afghan bowler that they would go for and attack. Um, so they, they, they have other options, but they need to play him safe and make sure um, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't uh, take any wickets and put further pressure. Four wickets down already. It's interesting that Mohammed Nabi is, is bowling so many Rash of Rashid's over so early on. They're going to leave those other bowlers, like perhaps himself and Mujiba Rahman, as many runs as possible to deal with if Ireland are going to True. be defensive. And misfield out of deep mid-wicket. Not the first misfield this over, but this time it does not cost Afghanistan another run. That's the end of seven overs. Ireland are still in a hole. 44 for the loss of four wickets. So what do you think the idea is, here is from Mohammed Nabi? Does he just say, we're going to bowl Rashid through, you can be defensive to him if you want, and then we'll leave as many runs as possible to our other spinners? Or does he try and hold back an over or two, so it, just in case he needs that wicket-taking option later in the game? I won't be surprised if he bowls him through. I think Afghanistan needs to get just probably one more wicket to have that level of confidence and, and uh, um, convincing, uh, because uh, the last thing they need is um, a partnership uh, by the um, island batsmen because they have suffered from that in the past and uh, it cost them games, um, it cost Afghanistan games. So another wicket would be ideal and if that means ball Rashid Khan through, I probably think he would go for it because they, they are having the upper hand right now. Well, this is a big moment in the game here. We're talking about the skipper. Here he is with the ball. Mohamed Nabi is going to bowl his off breaks and we mentioned him as an option that Ireland might actually look to target if they're not going to target Rashid. Well, yep. these next six balls are going to be vital to the outcome of this game. A awful toss first up, hit hard by Gareth Delaney. Yeah, it would be interesting to see what they do against Nabi. Lot, lots of uh, teams would go for him actually because he doesn't get a lot of spin. It's much easier to read him from his fingers or wrists uh, compared to Rashid Khan. But he does tend to take wickets and break partnerships as well. He's, he's well known for that. Uh, uh, a veteran of the game for Afghanistan. He has been there from day one all the way over the past 10, 12 years. He has seen it all and he is still young. Well, he's taken a lot of pace off that. Gareth Delaney's gone to his slog sweep. It's, it's a favourite shot of his. He's at the toe end of the bat and it's one bounce out to Long On. Interesting just in front of our commentary position here. There is quite a big gap between Long On and Midwicket. Midwicket is very straight, perhaps because they feel they need to put square leg very fine because of the sweep. I think so. I think so. So if you Judging want, from the previous over, yeah. Exactly. So if you want to play that slug sweep, there is that option there. 
There is the sweep again. Fumble from Najib out at the mid-wicket. Just a single. Quite a lot of fumbles from the Afghans. Not, not just in this game, but their fielding wasn't impressive in the previous one either. That's another area they have to work on. Lots of players with, with broken fingers in the Afghan side, I have to say. I've been speaking to some of them and, and uh, yep, there are some injuries. Not the kind of injuries that would prevent them from playing in, in games, but... Good piece of running. Gareth Delaney comes back for the second. Mohamed Nabi's changed his angle now. He's coming around the wicket and I think he's going to try and spear that ball in. They make the Ardent hit against the angle towards the leg side, but it brings up Ardent's 50. Out slower than they would have liked, given the chase that's ahead. He's got out of the over so far, Mohamed Nabi, without giving him boundary way. He's got two deliveries left. It's really well bowled. There's no pace on offer at all. and He's not giving a length that Gareth Delaney can get underneath. It's another two, though. No, he has bowled well so far in this over, I think. There is that aerial shot. Could be, no. There was a chance, but it was a difficult one. Difficult one, but it's another drop catch. It is, it is indeed. I mean, good teams, good fielding sides will take those catches and then catches when you matches as it goes, but yep. yeah. Ramanello Gervas quickly runs over. But it's no secret that Afghanistan are not the best fielding sides um, uh, in terms of general fitness as well. Um, I think that's one key area, one department that they really, really need to work hard on. They have some major tournaments coming up with the Asia Cup. Uh, they will be playing the likes of Bangladesh, Sri Lanka. And then they are in a tough, tough group in the World Cup playing against England, Australia, New Zealand, sides that are brilliant in the field. Um, they will take lots of ones and twos off this Afghan fielding in those games. Yeah, especially big, big square boundaries in Australia. As Absolutely. Well. well, I mean, we were both wrong. We thought Rashid would continue. It's not Rashid. It's Mujib it's from Mujib. the city end. Yeah, another bowler that you feel are and probably have to target here. That required run rate is now up. I guess so. They have to go for someone. It's, it's the question is, who do they choose? Good for Mujib. Tucker's trying to use his feet to him. It's fired in quickly. Back of a length. It's difficult to get down to the pitch of the ball. It's went hard in front of square. They will look for two here if it doesn't beat the fielder. Was when Ghani down there. He's yep, brought the dive out, but he once again Afghanistan have so struggling in the outfield. Yep, they are. So what do you think the issue is for Afghanistan when the, when the fielding is struggling? Is it just a case of it's almost infectious? Once one person makes a mistake, it runs through the side. Is it an attitude problem? Is it a coaching problem? I think they're just not fit enough. It's no, no secret um, uh, in terms of running, in terms of effort. I wouldn't say they're not putting the effort in, but they're just not fast enough and they're not athletic enough. Um, and that, that's one key area they have, to, they have to work on. I do see them. Feel, doing quite a lot of fielding practice in the nets on a regular basis. Swept hard out to the leg side and the catch is taken. That was oh, a brilliant he's, catch, okay. He's ended up falling yep, over and we yep, are talking yep, about yep, the fielding. Yep. There is the answer to what I was just <laughs> saying. That was a brilliant, brilliant catch. Now we know how it is, I think. It is, and I think it was Navin Hack that dropped that tough chance at extra cover yep. in the last yep. over, so he's he's made up for it. Yep. It's the end of Lorcan Tucker. He's gone for 31 off 20 balls. He was Ireland's set batter. He's hit that hard. It's a good slog sweep out into the leg side. That leg side is much longer than it was yesterday. Wow, that's a fantastic catch. The ball, is, the no, force no, of the ball absolutely. hitting his hands has knocked uh, him he over. He did well to keep the ball in his hands. And um, uh, Naween is one of those players who has an injured finger. So 
the ball coming at you with that kind of speed, you always uh, sometimes you're hesitant, but he did well. Confidence booster for Afghanistan in the field brings George Dockwell to the crease in the ninth over. Not used to being in this early, perhaps he's normally the man that Arden looked to towards the back end of the innings. Well, he's got an opportunity to build the innings here, although at 58 for five. It's not quite last chance saloon for Ireland, but it's getting there. Yeah, I, I've been out with the fans, with the Afghan fans, and they're having a much, much better day today. Um, they were not impressed yesterday. They, they were, they were um, feeling down. Um, but today, I think uh, the team has given them something to cheer about. Any day you get 190 and reduce the opposition to 58 for five, it's a good day for your fans, that is for sure. Matters did cross, so Gareth Delaney is still on strike. And Mujib taking a wicket in his first over. You have to appreciate these Afghan fans uh, with their commitment and coming out and following the team and supporting them constantly. Pulled away into the leg side. There is that deep backward square out there. Keeps it to a single. And brings us to the end of the ninth over. Ireland 59 for five. Wickets, they just keep losing wickets every time. It looks like a partnership is going to be built. Afghanistan are well on top, and this is where they're at their best when they can just squeeze with that true trio of spinners. I mean, they, they, if they can give themselves a chance, uh, as far as T20 cricket is concerned, Afghanistan are a strong team, they're a strong side. They could give any opposition a tough day, um, but they just don't seem to do it consistently. That's the issue. Is there any concern with this Afghanistan side going to a World Cup in Australia where spin tends to be less of a factor that perhaps it won't be as effective as a play and a miss with the attempted slog sweep there? I think the bigger concern is they haven't played on, on green wickets too often and uh, uh, I think this is, this is their last chance to play on wickets that are somewhat similar to probably the Australian wickets. I'm not saying this is exactly like Australia. But after this, they're going to Dubai uh, for the Asia Cup. That was beautifully played. Yeah, cracking shot. Character Laney, short and wide from Mohamed Nabi. You can see what he's trying to do. He's trying to hide that ball outside off with a bit of extra pace into it, but he's got that all wrong. And it's after maybe premeditating the sweep shot in the last over, Delaney's just waited on that one nicely. Promise Nabi to change his angle once again. He's going to come back over the wicket. Spears that one in towards leg stump. And he's happy just to bunt it out into the leg side for his single. I think that's a better plan. All that length, it's very difficult to get underneath. Yeah. He has a good quicker ball. He's a very round arm spinner, isn't he? He makes it bowling yes. the quicker ball quite a useful weapon. That's the case with many of the Afghan spinners, the speed with which they can bowl their googlies or off spins, off breaks, especially with Rashid Khan. Well, that's good from Nabi, varying his pace nicely. Quicker ball, follow up. I won, that's all the pace taken off. Dockle just takes a single to long off. And the required rage continues to climb up for Ireland. It's now over 12. There's that slog sweep, it's in the air, it's not going to carry to the fence. Najib Zadran underneath it, and he takes the catch. It's a good catch. Gareth Delaney went to his go-to shot, he went for that slog sweep. Now he's too good for him on this occasion, and all of a sudden Afghanistan are holding their chances. Yep, absolutely, I think they're on top now, and uh, Ireland, it had got to a point where they just had to go for somebody, and uh, otherwise 12th per over is... is and it's creeping up. So they have to take the risks. Unfortunate on that occasion.
good length from Naby. Not full enough to really get underneath it with that slog sweep. You can just see it took the you know, half of the bat there on the, as the shot came in. We are going to take a drinks break with one delivery left in the 10th over. And we're nearly at the halfway stage. Ireland are 65 for six. They need something special. They do. I think um, from an Ireland uh, perspective, they wouldn't want to be bowled out too soon. Even if they go on and lose the game, they would want to stay out there and play as many overs as possible. As you said, all 12 per over, it's, it's going to be hard from here. But they would want to stay out there and play as many overs as possible. Yes. Two more games to go, so both teams still have a chance in this. It's just a completely different game today, isn't it? It's just the difference it Absolutely. makes with this spin attack when they've got runs on the board. They can build that scoreboard pressure, take risks. It doesn't matter if they do get hit for a boundary or two. And even though, as good as this spin attack is, they have struggled this week when nothing to defend. I, I, I can't put my finger on it. I don't know what it is, but the body language from the Afghans today seemed completely different from the onset. With Zazai coming out, Gurba is looking much more comfortable today as if... Uh, Zazai gave him that kind of uh, confidence, uh, a relaxation. Sometimes opening pairs, they, they're used to each other so much that when there's a disruption, when one of them do not play, the other finds it hard to play his game as well. So I think although uh, Zazai didn't go for it, in other words, he didn't blast Ireland's bowlers uh, to all parts of the ground, but I think his sheer presence at the wicket had something to do with the way Afghanistan started and gave themselves a chance and a good momentum, a good um, base to build their innings on. Which is interesting because with the bat, he actually went, his strike rate was under 100, so he wasn't his usual fluid self and by any stretch. No, 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 and that's surprising because remember he played uh, until the 12th over, I think, and it's unheard of if you if you tell somebody Zazai was out there until the 12th over and his strike rate was still under 100. That's not the usual Zazai we, we are used to seeing. Mark Adair comes to the crease and he's at the non-striker's end. George Dockwell whips that one off his pads out for a single to deep square and brings us to the end of 10 overs halfway through Ireland's innings. Chasing 190, there's six down. It's Jordan Dockwell and Mark Adair at the crease. And, yeah, I think that was you summed it up very nicely, Hamid, when you said that Afghanistan just clicked today. They did. And they needed it today. I think sometimes it's just that one change in the squad that kind of makes, makes the difference. So probably... Um, Zaze coming back into the team, and we know his record against Ireland. That probably, and remember, they're playing on a different wicket as well. That could have been a factor as well. Once he continues, George Dockle skies that one over short third. It won't go to the fence, and he'll come back for an easy two. I think he's just trying to hit that one quite straight. A bit of fortune could have easily. Well, straight to the hands of short third. And it's you also have to recognise that Afghanistan's change bringing Zazai in it was probably enforced. You know, we saw Hashmatullah Shahidi go off with a hand injury yesterday. True, but, they, but they backed the other ten players after two poor dis displays. So the captain and coach or whoever picks the team. No, I agree. Sometimes it can be a blessing in disguise, and I think uh, um, the reason why he missed the first two matches, uh, I've heard that he was not feeling well. Uh, he was having fever, temperatures. He looked uh, better today. Not 100% fit, I would say. And that was uh, obvious from the way he was batting as well. Not at his cracking best, but... Mark Adair is off the mark. With a punch down. It's long on. He's played a lot of cricket here this year. It's Mark Adair. With the Northern Knights, this of course is their home venue here at Stormont. And he likes playing at this ground, he likes batting here. It's the first time he's had a hit this series. Short and pulled into the leg side, there is a fielder out there. Oh, he... Mujib kicks the ground in disgust because it's yet another chance that goes begging. 
think it's just from the Afghans. His hands. Well, it's gone all the way for six. I think you're right. I think it just burst his hands. Let's have a look. It's a short ball, hit very hard. It's a long hit to that leg side boundary. It oh, did. he's panned it over the bar. Yep. I mean, just as we were saying, the fielding was improving. No, it hasn't. I mean, it was a good catch earlier from Naveen. That's absolutely right. But but uh, one bird uh, doesn't make it uh, spring. So uh, I think overall, uh, it's no secret their fielding uh, standards have not been impressive at all. Yeah, it's been a mixed day. I'm pretty sure that was Naveen as well out there. So he's he's put two down and he's taken one. It's a, a mixed bag. That's swept by there, but straight to short fine. Another fumble. Quite a lot of them today. Well, it's the end of the 11th. An eventful over that. And I like my thanks to Hamid. We're both going to depart and to take you through. The next handful of overs is Andrew Blair White and Alan Lewis. Nice to see Hamid with a smile on his face. <laughs> Very happy man at the moment is our Hamid. Afghanistan back in this series, Andrew Blair White. Definitely. It's been a very good performance of bat and ball from Afghanistan so far. Probably the less said, the better about their fielding still. But they've taken a few catches, dropped a couple, but they're still in a tremendously good position here. And one would have to think they'll be getting themselves on the board in this ITW T20 International Series. Oh, Karen Janet's effort in the last over on the boundary. That's a good shot. Easy two. Just talking about that chance the last over. Reminded me of YMCA thirds, that effort on the boundary. <laughs> Hands everywhere. Straight out through the red basket. Over there. Oh, and he's that gone, I reckon. Oh, oh. turned it down. Mark Hawthorne's turned this down. And. Mohammed Nabi is absolutely apoplectic at the moment. And as is Ibrahim Zadran, it was a terrific piece of fielding. And he didn't have a great day in the field yesterday, but that was absolutely superb work. I must say, that seemed out. Oh dear, and you can see Grabaz, he's not a happy man. A lot of hand gesticulations for different reasons. Mohammed Nabi having a word in the ear. <clears throat> Mark Hawthorne not having any of it, but it did look out from here. It has to be said. I know we're not in the greatest positions, but as we know with direct hits, Andrew? It just seems like Dockwell would be struggling if it was a direct hit. Bit of force behind that throw into the keeper from Mohammed Nabi. Anger, I would have thought, from the skipper. He said a few little quiet words with Mark Hawthorne in this game. Wide delivery to Zadran early on. He was at the non striker's end having a mutter. Of course, ICC match referee, the Sarge. As she's called, she informed me today, Sandra McPherson from New Zealand, keeping an eagle eye on proceedings here, making sure the spirit of cricket is upheld. Former policewoman, hence what she was christened by the faithful in New Zealand, a sparky character. Twelve overs gone. Ireland eighty-four for six. How do they go about this eight overs on? 
Well, they've just got to keep going. Look at that scorecard. Apart from Lorcan Tucker, really, no one got themselves in. Some very clumsy shots. Sterling, Balberni, Tector in particular. And realistically now, obviously you've got two hitters at the crease, but 106 from 48 deliveries. That's going to be tough. Very tough. But as Mark Adair proved against New Zealand, he can do it. Remarkable innings. 37 from 16. Of course, we had Zadran early on. 42 from 18. And that's the start. And that's gone straight. And it's going to be out. Hasn't got all of it. And easily held. Mark Adair. Rashid Gans had a good day at the office in the field. Very happy man. They've been much better in the field in general, Andrew. And you can just see a spring in the step. Would have been hurting Afghanistan after the first two losses. Yeah, I thought off the bat here, Mark Adair had gotten plenty of this, but just not enough. It was one of those, he was looking at it, hoping. And Rashid Khan was able to clutch it around a yard inside the rope. You were making golf comparisons earlier. Mark Adair had a face of a man that knew it wasn't quite the number. We call that a Condoleezza Rice. He sliced that one. Really opened his left-hand side, which will, of course, negate the power. And that's what it did. And Rashid Khan gleefully took the catch. And it's been a disappointing batting display from Ireland, really, Andrew. It has. It has. And the, I think the thing that they'll be disappointed about is that this is a pitch that actually runs or there to be scored on. I don't think 190 is potentially unchaseable on this. But had to get off to a good start. Might be another here. Indeed, there is. Oh, ricocheting off the stumps at the non striker's end. Oh, worry, Afghanistan too much, really, at this stage. Very much in the ascendancy here. Unless Dockrell can go on one of those onslaughts that he did in Pembroke. Clutch victory from the jaws of defeat in a very quick space of time. Roly Black not giving it away. That was a very similar situation to the one that Mohammed Nabi was a little bit disappointed about in the first innings. John Hand is through for a single to finish the 13th over. Majib causing issues today. 88 for 7. Yeah. It's the vagaries of T20 cricket, Andrew. You know, you can get a number of exciting finishes. Of course, we had a fantastic one. Day one. Day two was a rather drab, low-scoring affair. And Afghanistan kind of showed away a patient beginning. Gurbaz and Zazai laying the foundation for a very good score. And as you say, overall, it's been a very good pitch, but a number of Irish, very tame dismissals. Yeah, it hasn't been a, a batting display that Ireland will want to live long in the memory. It's a good shot from Fionn Hand around the corner. 
It's going to go away for a boundary. His first boundary in international cricket. Swept past short fine leg. And gone away past Rashid Khan at deep backward square. Much interest in the dive there. Rashid. Relatively escorted. Yeah, just not going to fuss too much at this stage. And more than capable with the bat in hand, we've seen that in the interprovincial domestic system here, playing for the Munster Reds, has contributed with many a, a good knock. I think that's obviously a great position for him coming into this Irish team that he is able with all facets of the game to contribute. Dockrell disappointed there. Full toss from Naby. Big space there between deep backward square, deep mid wicket. He felt he should have got it there. Oh, that's a very good shot indeed. One bounce, four over extra cover, and he'll be very happy with that, Fionn. And it's an excellent shot. Yeah, Mohammed Nabi tossing that one up, I think, thinking, well, wondering whether Hand would maybe take the bait. And he did. Played a lovely shot as well. Tries to scoop this one over, and I think the ball is going to run away and run away for another boundary for Fionn Han. So he moves quickly to 16 off nine. A handy little cameo. Excuse the pun, 14 over has gone 102 for seven. Interesting place for it to go, mind you. It seemed to go off the back of the bat. Unintentionally, I would have said, but it makes no difference. Four it is, and Ireland scrape over the 100 mark. Now, these four overs costing 38, rather expensive for him. Eight required from 36 deliveries. Big, big ask. At three wickets in hand. Turn the ground. Has he got enough on it? He does. George Dockrell. He's got it all the way off Rashid Khan's first delivery. And just a little bit of life being injected into this Irish innings. Well, one of the advantages here, George Dockle has a great propensity to hit these short balls when a lot of people would hit them square of the wicket. And he has this ability to be able to punch the ball, low full tosses, that type of delivery, often straight back over the bowler. An area where, of course, there's no cover and he's extremely strong. A little bit of a delay trying to find the ball, which they've managed to root out from the trees. I was fascinated early on, Andrew. There was a lot of this range hitting going on, practicing before the match. It must have been 20 balls went into those trees. If I was a young fella, I'd be nipping those into a plastic bag and taking them home. I think you still might be doing that at the end. Hasn't yeah. got enough on that, Dockrell. He's just managed to get it straight enough. Fionn Hans come back for two and gets back for two. Good running. Rashid Khan, unimpressed, flicks the bail off with his own hand. The hands are out again. He hasn't been happy bowling this week, Al. No, he just doesn't seem to bowl with any sort of rhythm, which is strange. But it can happen. Even for the greats of the game. <laughs> Playing a 
this from Darkroll. Let's find a target can here. It's made for exciting watching the last over or two for Ireland. It's not a little bit of respectability to this scoreline. Pulled away. Oh, that's more abject fielding out of deep mid wicket. I think Rashid Khan will very shortly have a heart attack for this fielding of his bowling. He's constantly been on the teapot. Every ball that's hit into the deep. But that was really extremely poor. Well, I know I, I really wouldn't say it very often, but that is brutal fielding. <laughs> really, like, slanted on his shoelace. And he's been immediately brought 80 metres over to the other side of the field, out of the danger area. Rashid has seen enough. Plundered down the ground by Draco four more for Ireland. So certainly a bit of fun being had here. George Draco continuing on his good form, moves to 32. Well, this over is now 16 deep for Rashid Khan. Not often that will happen. And a dot ball to finish off. 15th over, complete Ireland 118 for seven. And it happens too to be the biggest over of the innings, going for 16. Change in bowling, obviously, with Mohamed Nabi having finished off his complement of four. It looks like Majib Rahman is going to kind of come back into the attack this time from the Dundonald end of the ground. Majib has been good today. Two for 20 from his three. And certainly caused Fionn Hand a couple of issues in those couple of deliveries he bowled him. A few overs ago. Sporting a new hairstyle too, Majib. You can see that. All part of modern trends. Image. That's a fantastic shot from Fionn Hand. <laughs> Just helped that one over. Hazratullah Zazai, short fine leg, and gets himself another boundary into the 20s now. That is very good from Hand. It's a shot he plays a lot. He's just got enough on it, and that's excellent. First ball of the over. Do we have a Houdini finish on here, Andrew Blair White? That is my question. And now that you've said it, there's no chance. But you have to keep quiet there. It's like moving your seat in the changing room. Swept away more conventionally. Rashid Khan's going to have to do work, and does work very well to keep it down to one. He'd been moved a lot finer after that shot from hand. Well, there would have been sacrilege had he missed out there, Rashid Khan, having had the teapot for one of his own fielders in his, of his own bowling. Did very well there, got down quickly, got back to his feet, got the ball in. Excellent fielding from him. Carved away. Call is two. And they're going to come back first. Get back comfortably as well. See, I said this to you when we were on for the first five overs. That 65 off the last five overs would be very much doable if you had the wickets in it. Fair point. If these two can stay another 12 or 15 balls, perhaps go at one and a half to a ball and you just get one big big over and it can do it for you and Dockrell's done it before that's the big thing but it's a big ask all the same Majib now resorting really nearly to medium pace just trying to get it as full as he can smothering Dockrell there but Dockrell's done very well now 34 from 19 
as you see. Same again from Majib. Medium pace. Yorker is almost being employed and Tuckle unable to get a bat on it. That's ball the 16th coming up. Really good skills from Majib. Very good day at the office from him. Two for 28 from his four. 16 over is gone. Ireland 126 for seven. Well, he's effectively bowled <clears throat> three Yorkers there. Forgetting about spin. Basically medium pace. And that's an excellent spell of bowling from Majib, Nathan. Yeah, we've said it a few times now, but it's a different game for these Afghan spinners when they can squeeze and Ireland have to continually take risks against them. No surprise to see Majib back in the wickets. One man who's, who was not back in the wickets was once again Rashid Khan, but it doesn't look like he's going to get his fourth over here. Instead, it's going to be Navino Hak, who, well, you've, you've not been too impressed with some of his efforts out in the deep with those two drop catches today, Alan, have you? Certainly not. But he's certainly bowled very well. Shown that early on. But again, probably when you look at the downfall of the Irish batting, some very tame shots, really, Nathan. Good option, I think, to dock up. I think if you try and go Yorkers to him and you miss, you will be punished. I think you've got a much better chance of dismissing him, not necessarily by going short, but rolling into the pitch and taking a lot of pace off it. Well, he's very good at that, Naveen, isn't he? He's got some lovely change-up slower balls. And then he has this one that he can just generate that wrist, cock, wrist position, that quick Yorker. Oh, there's that short ball, but it, Doc will read it well. He waited on the pace off the ball with mid-off up. That was too easy just to swat it away. That's not an easy shot to play, though, Nathan. You know, there was literally... That was on the way down as it got to him. And he still was able to, look like, at the last minute, club that. Not an easy thing to do that, to get it over mid-off. Of course, mid-off in the circle. Well, I think he's, he's, he's trying to target that area regardless. I think it's an area he likes to score in a lot. And they've got that fielder up. So you combine those two things, he's going to look for that option. So for him, it was just a case of adjusting to, to the ball once it completely died in the pitch. And... He's done that pretty well. Very well. Very, very well. After a bit of a search for the ball, it looks like they found it. Might have found one from earlier training days. Yeah, it's not the first time today that the comment has been made that when you go looking for the ball in the storm at bushes, you might not come out with the right one. Well, Roly Black is happy, that's the main thing, so Naveen is to continue. John Hand is going to come back for the second and pretty comfortable in the end. Probably shouldn't have been that comfortable. Nongon didn't have too much ground to make up to his right-hand side. But again, just another sign of, no, oh, they're, they're probably going to win this game and win it reasonably comfortably. Although, who knows with George Dockle and the form he's in. But Galastan's fielding continues to be a significant concern. Another strong shot down the ground. George Dockwell immediately calls for two, but he's not going to take on Rashid Khan. He's one of the few Afghan fielders who has displayed that you can't take him on in the deep. Fionn Han's done a good job here, hasn't he, Nathan? 21 from 11 on debut. Obviously, got a wicket on debut, so a, a pleasing day. Yeah, well, he came, he came in with a bit of a free dig, didn't he? I think it was 85 for seven, if, I'm, if I can remember it correctly, when he came in. So I think it was a case of play a few shots, get Tockle on strike and see what happens. And all of a sudden, he's had his fun and he's got his side into a very good position considering where they were. Confusion. I tell you what, not sure where that hit Fionn Hand, but he seems to be okay. It certainly made a big thud.
similarity in the back of the commentary box here between Tector Siggins. No surprise. Siggins always quick with a chirp. Is there something humorous capability to it? Of course, providing all statistics here, which is great. What a shot that is from Fionn Hand. It's gone all the way. Navi Nohak went into the pitch and Fionn Hand said, thank you very much. I'm just going to carve you away over wide extra cover. It's a fantastic shot. It really is. Stand and deliver. Well, I tell you what, it's the last ball of the over. Ireland need boundaries and they, arguably more importantly, they would have wanted George Dockwell on strike in the next over. So... A bit of a free hit there for Fionn Han, just to stand and deliver, and that's exactly what he's done. Wow, fantastic shot, really. Just who knows, 51 from three. Just one big, big over. I know it's partly a wee bit of wishful thinking, because... terms of where the match is at really Afghanistan in the ascendancy Ireland never really got going but this has been very pleasing for the crowd that have joined us on a beautiful day here at Stormont and what it certainly makes the end of this game just a touch more interesting and Mohammed Nabi has responded to that by bringing on his trump card Rashid Khan for his final over Goes strong down the ground. It's in the gap. Dead straight. He loves it there. It is George Dockle. Rashid Khan can't ball full here. Well, the question is here, Nathan, is Rashid Khan going to go wicketless for the third game in a row? When will that... Or when is the last time that's happened? I don't think it's ever happened. Thank you very much for that, honest. Nathan. Well, he's gone further into the pitch and he's hit it wide of long arm, but he's able to... No, there's never two there. Okay. I was about to say hand has to come back, but you're right, Nathan. There was never two there. Yeah. Not as big a boundary on this leg side as it was yesterday. It just... This makes the start of Ireland's innings just that bit more frustrating, doesn't it? In terms of you can see the value of those wickets in hand. This is... Two or three more wickets left in the shed. This is probably not far off a match-winning situation for Ireland. I think Hand initially said no there on instinct, having hit picked out the man, but George Dock will pull, call the rank and said, you're coming through and getting me on strike. Absolutely. 47 from 27, Dock will again. He's That's going to be four more. That's going to be 50 for George Dock 51 off 28 deliveries. What an innings this is from Ireland's finisher. Is he going to drag them into a position where they can get an unlikely victory? This would be up there in the annals of Irish T20 wins. And George Dockle raises his bat in celebration. Stormont crowd rightly rises to him. It's been a fantastic innings. Fantastic innings is right. Great to watch. Rashid continues to go short. This one follows Dockle. It looked like it was the googly, but he's able to carve it out. To the offside for one. Your language now, Nathan. This really becomes a, a free hit for Fionn Hand in terms of get down to 36 from two. Still a huge ask, of course. I wonder if that's what George Dockwood was just saying to him here. Saying, you enjoy yourself here, young man. Pick where you're going to go early. Make sure you know your option and commit to the stroke. Oh, she can has got one more delivery to ensure he doesn't go wicketless for a third consecutive game. Oh, hand goes. The pull into the leg side. There's a chase on here. Oh, it's a good bit of work out of deep square. I think that's Navi Nolhak, who we've been more than critical of today, but he's done a decent job there running around to his right. Crucially, they get back for a second, which means George Dockle keeps the strike at the end of 18 overs, are under 152 for seven. Well, it's a rather surprisingly, 
Would you believe that's George Dockrell's first T20 international 50? Well, I tell you what, it doesn't quite surprise me that much, considering A, where he's batted in the last, in the beginning to middle of his career, and now the fact that he has been pinpointed as that man to come in and face 15, 20 deliveries. It's very difficult to get those half centuries, but look, the form he's been in, the way he's converted himself, and I think you have to say, if you look at global T20 cricket at the minute, he's probably one of the informed finishers out there right now. Absolutely, and there's the scorecard there. Difficult beginning for Luki, removing both Sterling and Balberni. And again, between Lili, Premier Batter Sterling, Balberni and Tector lose shots today by their own standards. <laughs> 52 off 29 from George Dockle. Good for a strike rate of just under 180. It's a serious effort considering how much this Afghanistan spin attack in particular were squeezing things before he came in. Having to continue, and that's a good block haul delivery. The field fine back and third up. He's failed to make contact. Not a lot of pace on the ball offered there by Naveen. The other thing now is this partnership between Dockel and Hand is a world record for the eighth wicket in T20 cricket. That's remarkable. There you go, Nathan. Johns were full of tidbits of information that even you and your journalistic flair. Nice to see you scrambling there, Nathan. Slower ball again, and Fionn Hand has absolutely pummeled that over the offside. He loves that mid-off region, doesn't he, Alan Lewis? Once again, he punishes Naveen for bowling into the pitch. Well, it's a better option than the other one, but he's absolutely clubbed that. That is a fantastic shot. Well, speaking of tidbits, Alan, my turn to try and stump you. Fionn Hand has just set a world record. Highest score by a number nine on debut. <laughs> It's all happening out here. That's a fantastic stat from Mr. Siggins behind us. That is extraordinary. That'll certainly be remembered in the hand household this evening. If they're to get over the line, it'll be even more extraordinary. 31 now from nine deliveries. What do you feel they might need off a last over, Nathan? I think 20? The, I think the target here is if you can get it to under 20. Who knows what's going to happen? They're going to be hitting to a slightly shorter leg side boundary, remember, towards us here, towards the clubhouse. Stranger things have happened. It's still a significant ask, and it only takes two or three good deliveries from Afghanistan here to win the game. But Well, of course, we've got to remember that series. Ireland, 20 required. Of Ireland's last over. Michael Bracewell did the job. So it is possible we were there to see it live. And will we be seeing it live here today? Uh, Afghanistan have changed things up quite rightly. They've put mid off back, which, given how strong hand has been there today, it's a surprise it's taken them that long. And goes to the ramp. It'll be a tough chance running over the shoulder, but it's taken. That's the end of Fionn Hand. He went for that ramp shot. He got it on the full, it was there for the shot, and he doesn't get it enough of it to clear the man running back at short fine. What a fantastic innings from Fionn Hand. Caught by Zazai, but it was a brilliant innings from Fionn Hand. Really entertained here today, and it was there for oh, it, Nathan, it was, there. it was there. Pace on, and Naveen didn't go to his slower ball with Fine Egg and third up inside the ring as he thought he might. Well, I suppose the one silver lining from an Irish point of view is that they did cross. George Docker will be on strike. And he'll have two deliveries here. Hand goes for 36 off 18. He's delighted the storm and crowd for half an hour or so. Strike rate of 200, four fours, two sixes. A debut knock to remember. Absolutely. Graham Hume's the new man, but he's on the long striker's end, and Stockwell hits that one hard down the ground, but he'll only get a single. Well, Graham Hume has one job and one job alone here. That's to send his ball 
long over the ropes. Ireland have no interest in a single here. Absolutely none. So he's really got a freebie. Graham Hume, he's got to try his best to do something with it, as you say. One is of no use. George Dockle really has to be on strike unless there's a definite two in the cards. Interesting to see what a field the Afghans put in place. Mr. Hume looks like they're going to have a fine leg back. Deep mid wicket. Long on. Nidoff is up inside the circle. Deep points. You're Graham Hume here. What's your area? Where are you targeting? You've got to pick it early and back yourself. Clear the left leg. Or in his instance, the right leg. And club it wherever you can, as you say, to the shorter boundary for him. Easier said than done. That's a wide ball. That helps. Oh, you can see what Naveen is trying to do there. Oh, I'm not sure about that option. It's a very short boundary to Hume's square leg region. Just needed to get a bit of bat on that. And it could have sailed. It's a risky option to go with the short ball. Round the wicket now from Naveen. that short ball Graham Hume's going to have to turn and go here Mujib is slow to the pick up at fine leg Hume with the dive but he's gone this time Mark Hawthorne raises the finger well not the not the worst result in the world for Ireland they do get one run and George Stockwell is on strike Graham well, it, was, it was the only thing really he could do Nathan in actual fact looking at a Coley it was a brilliant throw from Mujib Garbaz didn't really have to move. He could kind of work with the throw. and But Hume did the right thing. I think in the context of the team, that was the most important thing. He just got down the other end as quick as he could and tried to get back to ensure that Dockrell was on strike. So, 29. Oh, you're right. It was a brilliant throw from Bajib, considering we thought as he was running around, he was very slow off the mark running to his left at fine leg and I thought Graham Hume had a good chance of actually getting in there but he's nonchalantly ran to it and just pinged it in over the top of the stumps Absolutely. as you do Marazzi I think it's going to be yeah as Matsuda Marazzi The end of Navi Null Hack spell, by the way. Three for 38, a little bit on the expensive side, but those three wickets. Looking back at it now, given Ireland's issue as wickets in hand were crucial. 28 to win. George Who are you backing, Nathan? <laughs> Back in Afghanistan every day of the week here, Lou. Can you talk to Mr. Blair White? Any odds? We can't talk about those sorts of things. I'm terribly sorry, AB. Terribly sorry. Of course, ABW, big horse racing man, injudicious of DA Lewis there. However, 28 are required from six deliveries. Big gap, wide long on here for Dockerel if he wants it. He gets a low full toss, he can't get, oh, he has to, yeah, right option there. He turns down the single. Well, it makes the equation simple. He's got five deliveries, and every single one of them has got to disappear. Well, that should be that. He's hit it in the gap, and he might pick up four. In fact, he will. He splits long off an extra cover brilliantly. Well, I was only going to correct you there, Nathan. Four sixes and a four would get us... Would. Super... A tie, super over. However, he's got to put these four out of the ground.
And he hit that one hard over the offside. But there is a deep extra cover in place. One bounce to him. As you said earlier, Nathan, when you consider Ireland are within 24 of victory from the start that they had, it just shows you the value of how Afghanistan went about their business today. And the full toss again. Dockle. He's just going to treat this as a range hitting session now. Can't get it past Mohamed Nabi at long off. The Afghan crowd is starting to cheer. Oh, as Omar Zai keeps his foot behind the line. This is done and dusted. It's a good option. Slow bubbled into the pitch. It's the first time he's taken pace off in this over. Docco was using his feet. It's not something he does a lot of. Docco, we tend to see him get deep in the crease and just launch the ball straight. Perhaps a sign of frustration at the fact that the game is gone. Yeah, it's been tough because it's been a great effort from George Strockrell. Obviously that partnership, record-breaking partnership with Fionn Hand on debut. Well, that might be a wide. It is a wide. A sharp bumper from Amarzai, but it's too high. I like the look of this Amarzai. Beautiful action, rhythmical to the crease. He's quick, and he can only get better. You're not the tallest bowler in the world. More of a skiddy. With that pace, like you said, it's it's dangerous. And those fast Australian pitchers later on in the year, it could be a handful. Well, that brings an end. Two proceedings here at Stormont. An excellent... Full delivery. George Docker plays in this is outside off. Ireland ultimately fall 22 sh runs short of Afghanistan's total. George Docker with a T20 international career best innings of 58 off 37. But bar five overs of fun from Messrs Hand and Dockwell, Afghanistan were by far the better team today. Absolutely. Afghanistan well worthy of their victory, it has to be said. And we are now going to go for a break before we come back for the post-match presentation. Afghanistan have drawn back in this five-match T20 International Series at Stormont. And they win to the...
Welcome to the post-match presentation for the third game of the ITW T20 International Series between Ireland and Afghanistan. Afghanistan coming out on top by 22 runs and come back into this series. Ireland leading 2-1 after three games. Cricket Ireland would like to thank the following official sponsors. Daffa Bet, Exchange 22, ABD Sterling Reserve and ITW Universe. Also like to welcome the presentation party, Mr. David Griffin, the President of Cricket Ireland. The first matter in the post-match presentation is the Exchange 22 multi-bagger of the match. This goes to the player for bagging the highest number of points during the match on Exchange 22, the Sports K Sports Market. And he receives a cheque of 500 US dollars from David Griffin, and that goes to Ramanullah Gurbaz. And we might have to invite back up Ramanullah Gurbaz because the ITW player of the match who also receives a cheque of 500 US dollars from Mr. David Griffin is also Ramanullah Gurbaz. <laughs> Ramanullah, well, about it today. Must have been great to get some runs and, and to get a win for your team. Uh, yeah, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, of course, after two losing game. Uh, Winning is so important. That was a very important match for us. Yeah, of course. And how did you feel out in the middle today? Uh, well, we're really happy because after two games, which performance wasn't that much good, but today was uh, coach and captain was telling me that you have to take some time in the wicket uh, and then team will be in good position. So, yeah, I took some time in the wicket. Uh, team we, yeah, was in good position. And it must have been nice to be opening the batting again with Hazratullah Zazai, the two of you getting on very well. Uh, of course, uh, uh, from a long time I'm open with him. Uh, he was sick in the two games, but uh, oh, his comeback for the team was very important. Yeah, but uh, he came and he started really well. Yeah, I'm really happy. I feel really relaxed with him. And how do you go about adjusting to conditions in Ireland so different to what you'd maybe be used to at home? Uh, yeah, of course. But uh, as a cricketer, you have to ready for every position, uh, every condition. Uh, uh, it was not easy for us, but uh, just come and play again, uh, direct matches. Uh, but uh, now we uh, adjust with the weather and pitches. Uh, inshallah, we'll try our best to win the last two games as well. Well done today. Thank you so much. That was Ramanullah Gurbaz, today's player of the match and also multi-bagger of the day. I'd like to now call upon the Irish captain, Andy Balburney, for a few words. Andy, hard luck today. What would be your assessment? Um, I think just batting at the top. We just didn't get going, didn't get a good power play away and we're always in the back foot. I think it was pleasing from our point of view to see the fight at the back end with George and, and Fionn to get us with, within a touching distance. But certainly uh, when you're chasing a score like that, if you lose three or four early wickets, um, you're really up against it. And you won the toss and elected to field first. What was your feeling at half-time having restricted them to 189? Yeah, I think we were probably maybe just a bit disappointed. We thought maybe a similar score to the first T20. But again, um, with one short enough side, we thought we could chase that. Um, but like I said, we need to have a better start than we did. And... You know, that could have gone a long way to, uh, to chasing that total. And you had two debutants today, Graham Hume and Fionn Hand. It was great to see Fionn obviously take a wicket and also show off his capabilities with the bat at the back end there. Yeah, he seems to just make things happen, whether it's in the field or with the bat and ball. So um, his uh, energy is great around the group, and it was great to see him do his stuff today. And Hume as well, he's been you know, knocking down the door for a long time in interprovincial cricket. So, um, you know, it's never easy to bowl in T20 cricket, but I think the two of them uh, did very well today. And George Dockrell yet again showing off the, the form he's been in all summer. Yeah, he's in fantastic form and he's becoming a really important batter for us um, or cricketer for us um, in all formats. He can hit the ball so hard down the ground and, and gives us that power at the back end as well. So he's gone from strength to strength and um, it's great to see him in the runs again. And you have a few days off before Monday's game. How do you go about, I suppose, trying to take your time off and try to assess again for f the fourth game on Monday? Yeah, we're going to you know, probably take tomorrow off and then, then have a training session on Sunday. I think rest is quite important at this stage. It's been very hot here in Belfast um, and the guys have been putting in uh, amazing shifts. So uh, we'll have a chat about the, the team for Monday. But um, we've played pretty good cricket for three games. Um, we're 2-1 up, uh, but we really want to win this series. So we'll, we'll be back at it on Monday and try to do that. Our luck today. See you on Monday. That was Andy Balburney, the Irish captain. And finally, I'd like to call up the winning Afghanistan captain, Mohammed Nabi.
Mohammed, well done. I'm sure that was much more what you were looking for. Uh, Bismillah Rahim, yeah, the, the result uh, from last two games wasn't uh, good, but today we, we bet uh, proper uh, as a plan. Uh, the start uh, openers uh, give a good uh, partnership, and uh, that's why we put a good total on the board. Yeah. Yeah, you were saying at the toss that the partnerships were going to be key for your batting innings. To put together such a nice batting display overall as a team to make 189 must have really pleased you. Yeah, we, uh, from um, the way we're planning uh, for, uh, in the morning uh, for that game, we, we put uh, one or two partnership, big partnership, and also we finish uh, the game at the, at the end proper uh, the way we have gone, have gone playing. Uh, that's why uh, Najib and me at the end was... Uh, was uh, a, a suitable position for, for us. Uh, that's why we put a good total on the board and uh, we are under pressure uh, uh, at the island team here. And you must have been very happy with how you started with the ball with Faruqi and Navin Hak taking two wickets apiece. Yeah, early wickets uh, is more important uh, to, 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 to win the games, uh, to under pressure uh, the opposition team. Uh, they bowled brilliantly in the, in the first uh, 6 0. And for you, as captain, what do you think of your overall team performances? Do they feel like you're coming together and gelling as a side as this series goes on? Yeah, today uh, much better. Uh, we we, uh, we perform as a team today, and uh, hopefully we, we, we do well in the last two games as well. Well, you've won today. You're right back into the series. You must be looking forward to Monday now and trying to level it up. Yeah, we, uh, we try our best, and uh, hopefully we win both games. Well done today. Yeah, thank you. That was Mohammed Nabi, the Afghanistan captain. That completes the post-match presentation for this third game of the ITW T20 International Series between Ireland and Afghanistan. The next game is on Monday starting at 3.30pm. Our coverage will be going live at 3.15. at uh, Shahidi Pawanda.